watch TV, don't read magazines, don't even listen to NPR. Create your own. else to happen, but then you hear D. Anyways, we are here, and this is what we're going to be watching. We put together a wonderful lineup today of all deep animation. That's right, all tunes from the production company D.I.C. Deek. So, we shall just move along, but I do have one thing that I wanted to share. Because we are on this mission, not a mission, I keep saying the wrong words. We were on this uh, journey, maybe, with the laser disc situation. And we have another one to show today. Today's piece of wonderful laser disc history is Babao! Wizard of Oz. This Goldilocks. This is the amazing double Wizard of Oz laser disc. It's a pretty cool man. I would really like to be able to view these laser discs, but I don't think I'm going to be able to anytime soon because I'm not going to be coming across any laser disc players at Goodwill anytime soon, I don't believe. But one can always hope. But that is all we have for this morning. We want to get right into the tunes, but first, there is always the one thing that prevents us. What is the thing, my gizzle, that we need to do right now? Go get yourself a heaping bowl of your favorite part of a balanced breakfast. <laughs> And hang out with me and you from now till 12. And stay for the closer. Wait, I forgot the Eastern Standard Time part. From 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Now we got it and we're on the right track. So hang out with us right here on the only place for Deke Max lineups. This is the one and only <gasps> Sunday morning at 2 Max Welcome to Video Land. Mega High! Wake up, Kid Icarus! Welcome to Castle Thief! It's Congo Land! Mama Mine will get you, little princess! <laughs> princess, the palace is under siege! Behold, the ultimate warp zone! Fantastic world of Dragon's Den, where dragons and man lived in harmony for a thousand years. The peace has been shattered by the most evil dragon ever to breathe flame, Dragon Lord. Kill me before I let you touch my child, Dragon Lord. 
Not if I can darken your heart first. My hypnotic crystal has been helpful, Dragon Lord. Very helpful, Mother Bray. I have darkened the hearts of all the dragons, except one baby white. A baby? Ha! Dragon's Den is as good as ours! Not yet, Mother Brain. Baby white dragons grow into powerful adults. I will not rest until there are no good dragons left in the kingdom! Later at the Palace of Power. Give me your best shot, Simon. Don't bother trying to return my serve, Captain N. I learned it while spotting vampires on Castlevania. I call it my vampire ball. Ball has one mean bite. <laughs> Your Highness, come quickly. There's an urgent message from Dragon's Den. Princess Lana, we are the keepers of power on the world of Dragon's Den. All but one of our dragons have been turned evil by Dragon Lord's magic. If he succeeds in turning all the dragons to evil, our world will fall into darkness for a thousand years. Please. Rescue Puff, our last good dragon before all is lost. But how will we know where to find this dragon? You must be clever, Captain N. But most of all, you must be a dragon warrior. <sighs> You're too late to be a dragon warrior, Captain N. The last dragon has been caught. This world is ours now. <laughs> A thousand years of darkness? What a horrible is Maximus' fate. I don't believe that two-faced brain for a minute. What if she's trying to trick us? And the last dragon hasn't been turned evil yet. The princess is right. The end team may still have a chance to save Dragon's Den. Sounds like we're going dragon hunting. Oh boy! Next to vampires, dragon hunting is my favorite sport. A dragon, Simon, not a fox. I know that. I must have grabbed the wrong horn. Hey! <laughs> Moments later, on the magical world of Dragon's Den, Captain Anne and the N team arrive in the town of Breckenary. Princess, you and Mega Man go to the west and search for Puff. We'll go south and try to cut off Dragon Lord. If all goes well, we'll meet here at sundown. Holy guys, it's a weapons store. Don't be ridiculous. I have all the weapons we need right here. Trust me, Simon. I played this game a lot back home. We'll need weapons and armor to defeat Dragon Lord. Oh well, maybe I can do some fall shopping. Mmm, nice weapons you have there. I'll trade your golden battle axe for them. No thanks, but I could use some of that stuff that restores your power during battle. Oh, you mean magic herbs? <laughs> They're very expensive. How much you got? Uh, 385. American? Ha! I wouldn't buy a frog wart. How about trading for a digital watch? It has two alarms, a stopwatch, and dials the telephone. It's a deal! Hey! What's a telephone? According to the shopkeeper, this magicus helmetus will protect me from dragon fire. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, but what's gonna protect you from the helmet? What kind of weapon did you get, Simon? Weapon schmeppin'. I bought something far more practical. Water skis! <sighs> Sometimes, Duke. I think the N in N team must stand for no brains. Fools! That means the weapons won't protect them from me! King Hippo! Egg Plant Wizard! I want you to walk to Dragon's Den and turn the end team into Dragon's food! Whatever you say, Brain Breath. Ah! Uh, I didn't say nothing. He said it. Yeah! Ah! Now get moving before I poach you, you egghead! Gonna eat you, you idiots. We're your dragons. Get on. Give me a boot. <laughs> oh, brother. We're almost at the Sea of Scales. The shopkeeper said turn east at the shore. I've been hit! That's watermelon. And that's trouble! Let's move it! <laughs> Veggie bombs away! Magic herbs! D -d Duke! F -f -f Fetch the herbs! <laughs> oh, thanks, Duke. You saved my hide. Why didn't I buy some armor? There must be something in here! Oh well, when the going gets rough, Simon Belmont gets his trusty whip!
Earth. Six great issues plus six free strategy guides on a hot new game. That's twice the power for still 15 bucks. Wow. Go now. Nintendo, a quick-loading cartridge system with over 60 of the hottest titles ever. Games like Batman, a life-and-death struggle to end the evil Joker's reign of terror and save Gotham City. Games like Super Mario Brothers, a battle to rescue the Mushroom Princess from the evil Cooper Turtles. Go for the joystick for extra control, or go to infrared for remote control. The hottest games are on Nintendo, the world's number one game system. White dragon! Grab onto my hand! Boy, are we glad we found you! Mama, help! I it's okay, we're friends. We came to help you. I don't think she understands. That's because it's not what you say that's important, but how you smell. Oh, do dragon, my favorite cologne. Ah. Oh, don't worry, little baby dragon. Simon's going to take care of you. Yes, he is. Oh, I'm not your mother! Uh, no, but you probably smell like it. Stop it. <laughs> it's okay, Duke. She's just a playful baby. I hope. We've got to find the princess and Mega Man and let them know we found her. Oh, we've been searching for hours, Mega Man. There aren't any dragons within miles. Look, Your Highness! A Mega Monstrous Castle! Maybe there's someone there who can help. Princess Lana and Mega Man head for Castle Sharlock, the residence of the evil Dragon Lord himself. Dragon Lord, two intruders are headed toward the castle. Well, what are you waiting for? Prepare to welcome them. Uh, why don't you see if you can <laughs> pick the lock? Biggest fireplace I've ever seen! This isn't a fireplace, your highness! It's a dragon's bedroom! I'm afraid the little man is right! Dragon Lord! Stand back, your highness! I'll show this mega lizard how big Mega Man is! Whoa! Something tells me this isn't the guest bedroom. Mama! What's the matter, Puff? <laughs> she hasn't eaten in hours. She's probably hungry as Maximus. Yeah, but what do dragons eat? Why, dragonflies, of course. I just happen to have some. <laughs> Ungrateful brat. She's just a baby, Simon. And where I come from, babies eat milk. What a wonderful idea. You can take her home with you and um, come back when she's grown up. Look, a cowacus. Come on, Puff. This was your idea. Oh no, not me. I'm a valley kid. The only way I know how to get milk is with a straw. <laughs> Lucky for you, I happen to be an expert in these matters. <sighs> I give up. This is impossible. Nice going, dude. You really scared the milk out of her. Kid Icarus, 
Let me have one of your suction cup arrows. Meanwhile, back at the Dragon Lord's sinister castle. Blah, it's no use. These walls are protected by some kind of mega magic that repels my blaster. There must be some way out of here. There is, your highness. You're the keepers. Yes, but the power that we keep is hidden. And unless you can get it, Dragon's Den can never be freed. How can we get to your powers if we can't even get out of this cell? We can help. Here, catch this. What is it? Magic warp water. Wherever you spill it, there shall appear the dragon warp. But why didn't you use them? Because, my young princess, the passage through the warp is not an easy one. Good luck. Well, what have we got to lose? It didn't work. Ah! Ah! When you laugh, not when your heart stops. Let's try that way. Hey, we did it! She's smiling again. <laughs> What's the matter now, I guess? Oh, you must have fed her too fast. We'll have to burp her. There, there, little dragon. Give your Papa Simon a nice big burp. Talk about heartburn. We're all ready to go. <laughs> oh, no. Not again. Absolutely. We're heading straight for Castle Charlock? Charlock? That's Dragon Lord's castle. Gavinicus, look! Hey, it's the Princess and Mega Man. Oh, I'm glad you're all right. You found the power items. And you found Puff. And I have found you all. Dragon Lord. Get the baby dragon! <laughs> Let's make like the Stooges and spread out! This'll fix your bad breathiest. <laughs> the Keeper said these power items could help us. I'll see what this lightning bolt can do. Simon, you try the armor. Oh, but I look awful in gold. All right, Dragon Lord, prepare to do battle with Simon the Terrible! <laughs> hey, I can't see this! Oh! I don't know what this does, but I hope it does it before we wind up the main course at a dragon barbecue. No! Your power is nothing compared to my magic! That magic lightning is removing Dragon Lord's evil spell! Thank you all for 
saving my little puff and for saving Dragon's Den. Ah, it was our pleasure, uh, Mrs. Dragon. Speak for yourself, Captain N, and while you're speaking, would you mind asking someone to get me down from here? <laughs> hey! Cut it out! Oh, I'm allergic to dragon slobber! Kevin, I thought I told you to clean up your room. The Game Master. Dick. After these messages, we'll be right back. They say our solar system is centered round the sun. Nine planets large and small parading by. to the sun it's a lot of fun it's a hot spot it's a gas hydrogen and helium in a big bright glowing mass it's a star it's a star so can it got an autograph mercury was near the sun so janet stopped by but the mercury on mercury was much too high so janet split for venus but on venus she found she couldn't see a thing for all the clouds around. Earth looked exciting, kinda green and inviting, so Janet thought she'd give it a go. But the creatures on that planet looked so very weird to Janet, she didn't even dare to say hello. It's a bird, it's a plane, why it must be a UFO. But it was interplanet Janet, she's a galaxy girl. The solar system is from a future world. She travels like a rock. Jupiter's big and Saturn shows off its rings. Uranus is built on a 
seriously on Street Sharks. I'm glad to offer my services, anything for my government. A little more sodium pentothal before we start the exploratory surgery. Dr. Paradigm is about to fillet your brother. Shark attack! Oh, bro. Yo, Sharks, welcome to the Benzman's humble abode. Oh, hey! Oh, yes. Piranha. You're gonna add piranha DNA to the street sharks? Sharks! Redesigned. But you should be pleased. Think of it. You'll never need sleep, never get sick, maybe even never die. Who knows? By the time I'm through with you, you'll be a brand new species, powerful beyond imaginings, and with minds to match. Cold, precise, unswayed by the vagaries of petty human emotions. <laughs> It's crunch time! Yeah! Shark attack! It's back! Slam you, Baronoid! Slam you! Yeah! Slam you! Righteous! It's okay. Don't worry about me! <laughs> oh, but they do. It's their fatal flaw, just like their father. Come on, bud. We gotta get you out of here. Here comes the sun, Vistas. A welcome sight with sharks prowling our nuts to Bear City. They were last spotted headed out toward the I-18. Your sky guy's been scoping the scene, but so far... How do you know? Being sighted at 4 o'clock. Oh, get to it. I feel like an earthworm. Next time, keep your mouth shut. Yo, Sharks, how about a few words for the press? I'll give you more than words, you sleazy ratings hub. Guys, come on. Give me an exclusive. So you can spread more lies about our father? Tell me about you, Dan. How does it feel having your own flesh and blood turn you into, well, sharks? Being frenzy! Oh, I didn't mean anything! Uh, 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 hey, what are you doing? Uh, uh, uh. Guys, chill your gills. Everybody's buying Paranoid Story. Benz is right. We go ballistic, we're just giving him one more reason to make us look bad. Come on, let's rip up the streets. <laughs> Dad didn't do it, okay? He isn't that kind of guy. Yo, Fist Cityites, I just had an up-close in-your-face encounter with a shot. I smell ratings. And I got They're okay. Great. These guys are hazardous to your health. What? KFIZ, I want to talk to Guy in the Sky. Now. Sky Guy here. You off the air. Now I am. What's this about these shot busters? Street sharks, Sky Boy. You got them all wrong. See, I know what really happened. What really happened, lady, is they attacked me. And all I did was ask how it felt having their dad do this to them. Look, 
Did it ever occur to you that it might just be a big lie? If Bolton didn't do it, who did? I have to go, but I'll give you a hint, Einstein. Start with Dr. Paradigm, Bolton's colleague at FSU. He should have a few answers. Oh, am I glad to see you. What happened? Where have you been? Long story, Lena. Fascinating. The liquefied DNA disintegrates cellular walls, disrupting the ionic bonds that hold the molecular lattices together. We're talking about my claw here. It's only temporary. But if I formulate the stronger dosage, attacking different molecular structures, this could be a formidable weapon. to bring them to their knees. Back to work. I need that ultra collider operational. Hey, keep it tuned to your Sky Guy for the latest on the street shops. Yep, that's their name according to my mystery tipster. Don't touch that dial. I'm told Dr. Bolton may not be the one responsible for turning his sons into sharks. My source says another high-ranking geneticist at FSU has all the answers. I'll keep you posted. Busted. What are you going to do, Dr. What do politicians do? Hold the press conference. These Bolton boys are in denial. They don't want to believe their beloved father did this to them. So there's no truth in the report that you are actually responsible for what happened to what other reporters are calling the street sharks? He did this to me. Thanks to Bolton, I must wear this respirator suit for the rest of my life. What happened to these boys is a tragedy, but that doesn't mean they're not dangerous. I wouldn't be surprised at all to hear more attacks, more tragedies. I'll show him a tragedy. Turn yourselves in, street sharks, before you hurt anyone else. That lion lowlife! You bottom feeder! You're going... Yeah. Oops. Sorry. Guys, you gotta get a handle on this thing with the TV. We break away for an urgent news flash. The Vision City Armory is under attack. We go now live to Guy in the Sky above the Armory. This is hitting critical mass, Fisters. The street sharks just swiped a smart bomb and a whole lot of other stuff. They're arming themselves. This is war. What? Did you see that? Back to you, Daniel. What? Dr. Paradigm is right. These street sharks are armed and clearly very dangerous. Armed? Maybe. Dangerous? Definitely. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an unconfirmed report of another shark attack on Vision City Bank. What? I don't get it. We're being framed. Yeah, big time. Great. Now they'll say we wiped out the electric company. We'll soon find out. Your Sky Guy just picked this up on the police channel. A thinned person just blew up the generating station. Predators have haunted our streets before, but nothing like this. Who knows where or when the street sharks will strike next. All we know is that until these carnivores are captured, there will be no peace in Vision City. The street sharks will have no place to run but to me. Yo, Fizzies! Police report a dentitionally challenged, uh, augmented individual has been spotted heading toward I-18. Nothing out there but the old nuke plant. Let's blast! Wreck 
Got my iron for today. So where are those lower life forms? Lower up. Wasn't it? The professor's not going to like it, but I think we've seen the last of the Screech War. You say? Alright, that's it. You guys are gonna be sorry. More than sorry. You're dust. Look your fuel rods in there! Oh no! Is that what I think it is? Yeah, enough radiation to finish off Fission City ten times over. Stay right there, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming up next! Paranoid with his liquid laser gun! Ben! Dr. Finn! Reptile shoots his blood-sucking eel! But wait! Slugger slam to the rescue! There no match for the sea shark! Now get this shark posted by mail! With purchase of any shark figure sold separately! Details in store! Can our four heroes stop Dr. Piranha's monster Kilimari? My creature will rule! Ah! Shark attack! Shark attack! Sea shark! Time to fry this squid! They bite! Heroes, Streaks, and Ravenous Raptor battle Kilimari with the help of two new buddies. Meet Moby Lip with his flashing tongue. And Rock, let's rock and roll! The two of the world depends on Street Sharks. Gotham! The evil Dr. Parano has changed four innocent brothers into Street Sharks. Join Ripster, Blaze. Jack and Big Slamu, four heroes fighting to stop the evil Dr. Piranoid from taking over the world. They fight, they bite, they kick some serious sin. Now blast into action with the new Shark Cruiser, with monster biting power and fin action traction. Eat your Piranoid! Street Shark figures and Shark Cruiser vehicle, each sold separately. Shark Cruiser, the ultimate fighting. This is not a test, I repeat. This is not a test. Vision City is experiencing a dangerous rise in radiation levels. Proceed at once to a civil defense shelter. Radiation! We'll metamorphosize! What can we do? What we do best! Shark dive! guy. He's wasting the sharks. We gotta do something. We know those two clowns at the armory weren't the sharks, right? Let's roll the tape again. And I'll do some video enhancement to see if we can find anything. Yeah. The mayhem and terror ends here. Now. I'll give you mayhem and terror. Jam. Cool it. Cool it. But we're not responsible. We had to forget it, Slamu. I won't believe you anyway. Wise choice. Dr. Paradigm, we need your expertise. That's the guy responsible for all this. Arrest him! 
Yeah, and check out his other lab experiments while you're at it. Uh, bioengineering gone wrong. The logic neurons are the first to go. And you're next! Tasers, fire! <laughs> Good news. Are you misinformed? Hi, I want to talk to Sky Guy. The armory break in? I've got proof. It wasn't the street sharks at all. I'll feed it to him on a direct video uplink. You've been very helpful, Lieutenant, but I'll take them from here. I wouldn't do that, Lieutenant. I got something you must see now. You can't be listening to this tabloid mudslinger. I have the situation completely under control. I'll just take the street sharks and... Not yet, Professor. So, here's the armory break-in. The street sharks, definitely no claws. All right, now we're talking. This means there's more of these vicious freaks. It's a plot to take over the city. What? You're right. That thing looks more like a, a lobster. This is absurd. Just let me take the sharks and... Hold it, Doctor. Why, you... Doctor, what's wrong with you? Oh, that's a toughie. Got a spare hour or two? Doctor? What's wrong? Guys, detain this monster! <laughs> monster? Me? You're pitiful. Arrest him now! <laughs> I will not tolerate your petty, primitive methods. Every time Dr. Paradox gets mad, he turns into paranoid. We need to pay the doctor a little house call. Time to rip off the streets. You're not going anywhere. Hey, 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 Assemble the missile launcher! I want that warhead disassembled now! Disassembled? But... Do it! It's time to expand my test group. Say by 10, 20, 1000. <laughs> Welcome, Street Sharks. I have a surprise for you. Uh, taser field? Then it doesn't work underground. Longer dosage just needs to be inhaled. Now, if I can just find some place where a lot of people are gathered. They were telling people to go to the civil defense shelter when those nuclear fuel rods started to melt. So your stupidity might actually pay off. Ready for launch cycle. Prepare for involuntary genetic upgrade, Fiction City. It's the future. <laughs> My smart bomb is on its way. No! Fission City is going to be my new laboratory. And in exactly 57 seconds, I'll have a brand new batch of lab animals. Change of plan, Karanoid. <laughs> I think you need to check your look. All right. May I try that a second? So the 
smart farm want to do? Skip a grade in school? No, but it can hit a precise target from hundreds of miles away. Where's it headed? The Civil Defense Shelter. But everybody's still there. All those kids. You gotta do something. Yeah, find this baby a new target. I hope this works. I aced assembly language, but we didn't exactly cover cruise missiles. Here goes. Did it work? It worked! It worked! Whoops! What's wrong? It's coming right back at us! Oh no! Okay, I put the collider on overload. Everybody out! Ten seconds to meltdown. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Incoming! Oh no! DNA bomb will be totally neutralized. And Tyranoid is totally out of business. I wish Dad were here to see all this. Yeah, I know. But I got this funny feeling he's not too far away. You know, this saving the world business really works up an appetite. Stay tuned, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. This is what I call a beautiful morning. I think I'll take a nice little jog around the neighborhood. That end don't know it, but I'm inviting him for breakfast. Hey, Ed, wait a minute. I want a word with you. The word is stop. Slow down, you little wretch. You're running all your fat off. I better have breakfast now before he loses too much weight. They may be small, but they're spicy. Boy, I sure got the air knocked out of me that time. You're not just a whistling tiptoe through the tulips. <laughs> and that's enough out of you, dog. If you don't like the caste system around here, take a walk. Breakfast time. Everybody hungry? Here's a lump of sugar to sweeten your day. <laughs> a doggy bone for you. Ooh, careful. Mustn't bite the hand that's feeding you. And a bowl of hot porridge for you, honey. Eat everything up so you get strong and well. <coughs> porridge. Food. Who does she think I am? Goldilocks. And it is only that. <coughs> and that's an <coughs> Mind your own business, dog. <laughs> As for you, Wang, I got news for you. Your troubles are over. You wouldn't need a man with a broken leg, would you? Don't worry. The castle just had rough it. What on earth is going on in there? I thought I heard 
very noise. I guess my old ears are deceiving me. Quiet! I got enough trouble with noises. Who needs you? So don't be a wise guy. You didn't hear me. I said don't be a wise guy. Okay. We'll take it from the top. Don't. You know something? I think he's dead. Aha! Uh -huh. I am sure I heard a noise this time. Let's have quiet in here. This is a hospital, you know. Some hospital. The hospitality around here could make a person sick. Look at! I'm inventing a new kind of communication system between us. If you want to say something to me, all you do is speak two to two. There's only one thing I gotta say to you. You're a stupid long-nosed... I hated to cut him off in the middle of an insult, but I couldn't resist his aroma. Lunchtime, everybody! Here's your sugar, you sweet darling little... Oh, he's gone! Wherever did he go? Oh! Oh, no! You didn't! You bad old hog bark. It hurt me worse than it hurt you. Believe me. I'm glad to see you both back on your feet again. You can go now, but be careful. You know something, Ed? You never looked healthier. In fact, I think you put on weight. Well, here we go again. Slow down, Ed. You shouldn't run all your fat off again. <laughs> You know, Ant, you're a jinx. And a jinx is like an insult. You have to swallow it. Not again. Yes, again. And you won't get away from me this time. And as for you, you broken down Rin Tin Tin, don't interfere in my business. Oops, excuse me, sir. It's a mistake. I thought you were somebody else. Don't go away, Ant. Somehow I've got the feeling I'll be back. Oh, hi, Vern. Your buddy Ernest is just studying. Studying real hard. Well, okay, this is it. You see that, Burn? That is my dream machine. That is the Rolatomatic X1 15 Topographic Time Expander wristwatch. Burn, it's got everything on it. It's got a calendar and a weather vane and and a veggie chopper and and Burn, it even hooks up to your plumbing. I've got to have this watch, Burn. I've just got to. And I figured out a way to get it. This week, Vern, I'm going to pass every test in school. And that way, I'll deserve to get myself this watch. But your old buddy Ernest is going to have to be tough. Rough, tough, and hard to bluff. Yeah, Vern, in school this week, when it comes to tests, your old buddy Ernest is going to be a lean, mean, studying machine. Know what I mean? Hey, Vern, it's school. You know, Vern, I've got my strategy figured out for how to pass all my tests in school this week and get that wristwatch I so richly deserve. I've got a 
Pass my spelling bee. I gotta bring my science up to a C level. I gotta pass that history test with flying colors and don't look back. Gym class is no sweat. Math's no problem. And music, for a guy like Ernest P. Worrell, music is a snap. Miss Keaton will be out with the flu today, so we've arranged for you to have a substitute teacher. Well, it's nice to say we're all awake. Where's my apple? Thank you. Now we're going to call the roll. If you're absent, please raise your hand. Never mind. Let's get right to it. How many states are there in the good old U.S. of A? Fifty. All right. What is the nickname of the prime minister of the seventh pharaoh of the fifth house of ancient Egypt? Kimberly. Well, I can see we haven't been doing our study, Woody. Take out a half a sheet of paper. We're going to have a pop quiz. Dear Mr. Hightone, please excuse Chuck and his brother Bobby from class today because they have a fever. Signed, your closest personal friend, Chuck. Hey, Vern. You know, Vern, this may be the most important partner you have during your educational years. Your locker, Vern. Keeper of the flame. Treat your locker with respect, Vern. Treat your locker good. Because this locker contains everything you're going to need during your formative years. You and your locker, Vern, the right combination. Know what I mean? Vern, speaking of the right combination, can you remember mine? I can't remember whether it was 264 to the left or... 325. No. 325. 11. I mean, right. 12. Left 12. Right 16. Left 12. Right 16. Left 12. Right 16. What is the matter with you? I don't know, Mom. I'm scared. I don't think I can go to school today. Well, I don't like the way you look. I'm calling the doctor. Hello? Uh, yes, can I speak to the doctor, please? Oh, uh, well, it's about my son. I think he's got a fever, and he's acting a little strange. What? Oh, yes, he is. Oh, no. No, not, not dance fever. Look, look at all the split ends on this thing. Boy, when was the last time you shampooed? Probably use hand soap. <laughs> Morning, Earl. Oh, hey there, Ernest. Boy, you sure are shaggy. Have a seat here and let me lower those ears for you, boy. Have a seat right there. There you go. You know, Earl, I'm getting real serious about school. I'm oh. bringing up my grades, so make me look real professional, like a, like a Wall Street tycoon. That's it. A Wall Street tycoon. All righty, Ernest. You just sit back and relax now. Well, that old Earl fix you up there, boy. Now, just hold real still, all right? Now, don't fight it, Ernest. Don't, don't fight it. Don't fight it, all right? Righty, Ernest. <laughs> there you go. Take a look. Tell me what you think, huh? Ah! Earl, this doesn't look like a Wall Street tycoon. Oh, silly me. Oh, I thought you said a complete buffoon. What do you think, huh? Do you like it? It could work. Oh, I personally couldn't wear this. Did you notice a little hat on? Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. You watch me get Fred's Fruity Pebbles. 
Who are you? I'm the master rapper, and I'm here to say I love Fruity Pebbles in a major way. He loves Fruity Pebbles in a major way. The bedrock yellow, orange, purple, lime, and red. But to get the fruity taste, I got a trick, Fred. <laughs> fruity Rudy. <laughs> To get the fruity taste, he's got a trick, Fred. Bonnie! Guess that's a wrap. Most fruity pebble cereal, part of this nutritious breakfast. Yep, but dabba delicious. Take out the slack. Okay, Vern, here's the bet. If I can do this, if me, your old buddy Ernest, can pull this off, you will buy me this year's supply of cold, wet, wonderful Sprite with a great lime and taste that beats 7-Up, don't they? A year's supply of Sprite if I can do this, right? Okay. Heading up. Got it. Turn left. The fence. Hi, boys and girls. I'm Matt Finish, photographer at large. I'm going to be taking your picture this afternoon. Are you ready? All smiles now. Here we go. That's not so funny in the back row. Knock it off. Ready? The light's all wrong, but I like the direction we're going. Let's do it. All right, Judy, your word is liberty. Liberty. L-I-B-E-R-T-Y. Correct. Free. Free. F-R-E-E. -E. Correct again. You may be seated, Judy. Piece of cake. That watch is as good as mine. Know what I mean? Ernest? Ernest, your word is chrysanthemum. Chrysanthemum. Oh, you mean the, uh, the flower or, or the car? Ernest. Sergeant Glory. Ten hut. I'm Sergeant Glory. Listen up, cadets. Today's lesson is school. School, an institution for learning. School teacher, a person who teaches school. School work, work to be done in school or assigned as homework. When attending school, remember two simple rules. Rule number one, never stick your head in a pencil sharpener or you will be one sharp cookie. <laughs> Little joke there. Rule number two, obey all the rules. That is all. Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome. I, of course, am Existo, the... Out of the ordinary. And this is my little friend, Peter. And Peter, of course, is a little bunny. Well, he's not a real bunny. It's more like a little lawn ornament. And I'm going to see if I can't pull, yes, a hat out of a rabbit. I pulled a hat out of a rabbit. Thank you. Thank you. All right, class. Who can tell me what the first three words of Moby Dick are. Um, Ernest. Call me Ishmael. Very good. All right, now, who can tell me what the last words of Moby Dick are? <laughs> Ernest again. The end. <laughs> My roommate George here is working real hard on his book report. Reptile Ranger, a Western novel based on the true story of Iggy the Iguana, the first lizard elected sheriff in the state of Texas. I've been helping George with his homework because he wants to be the first one in his family or species to go to college. I don't think gun-slinging toad best describes Iggy. Yeah, and I just know he's gonna do great. Because when it comes to typing book reports, old George here can really fly. No, George. When I said fly, I was not talking about your lunch. Now get back to your book report. Between two colliding molecules, in order to produce an effective collision, is called the activation energy, or E sub A. Now let's review diagrams 11. Point. Where have you been? Ben? We've been scared. Me and Bobby were on our way to school just like always. And this giant thing came out of the sky, made this whirring sound, caused a lot of noise, and hurt Bobby's ears real bad. 
I stopped at a farmer's and picked some cotton and put it in his ears. And I think Bobby's, I think Bobby's hurt real, real, real bad. I better get him to the nurse. Hello, doctor. This is Nurse Williams there at the junior high. I'm afraid we have an epidemic situation here. Yes, I have. Well, it's dance fever. We better start giving shots right away or we're going to have a big hullabaloo on our hands. Hey, Vern, check it out. I wanted you to be the first to see this. Vern, this is going to guarantee me that big, fat A on my science project. And that wristwatch is as good as on my wrist. Burn. This is the Ernest P. Worrell Automatic Chalkboard Eraser Cleaner. And when my science teacher sees this burn, he's gonna go, Ernest, you ride as rain, buddy. I've seen a lot of science projects in my life, but Ernest, this here is pure science. And it is, Burn. It is. Watch how it works. Well, it's still got a few bugs in front. Pure science. <laughs> you know, Woody, I've got to get better grades in school or I'll never get that watch. So I've decided to show them up at Show and Tell and show you off. Oh, yeah. Great. That way, you'll get all the credit, and I'll end up looking like a dummy. But, Woody, you are a dummy. Am not. R2. Am not. R2. R2. Am not. <laughs> now, who's the dummy? <laughs> it's the Bill and Coo Show. Hi, everybody. Hi. Got a real sad song for you today. Real sad. Goes, Goes like, like this. this. I bought me a pencil on the first day of school. It had an eraser with my name on it, too. If my teacher's listening, tell me what do I do? Cause I lost my pencil on the first day of school. I lost my pencil on the first day of school. I ain't absent or tardy, I didn't break any rules. My daddy once told me, you're as good as your tooth. And I lost my pencil on the first day of school. Ooh, ooh. Love you, kid. Love you, Bill. Bye. Bye. And, and then this big tidal wave, tidal wave, came right through our house, washed all of our furniture, broke out the kitchen window, and washed Bobby's favorite kitty away. You remember that kitty that he brought at show and tell? He paid $67,000 for that cat. You know how attached he was to that? Oh! Hey kids, it's time for Lonnie Don School of Hollywood Sound Effects. Hey kids, how you doing? Did you hear that? Boy, I sure did. <laughs> that reminds me of a model airplane picture I did some years back with Stuart Farley. I was co-pilot. Here's the sound of that engine. Let me show you how to do it. First, you take the palm of your hand, place it on this cheek, wrap your fingers around, keep this one free for the propeller. <coughs> So long, kids. See you next week. Don't forget. Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. There's a new cereal in the neighborhood with owls and ghosts. Tastes real good. Ghostbusters. Marshmallow ghosts. Fruit flavored oats. Ghostbusters taste great. With milk and juice and toast and a nutritious breakfast with the ghost. Ghostbusters! Fruit flavored O's. Ghostbusters! Marshmallow Ghost. Ghostbusters! What are you gonna crunch? Ghostbusters! Hey, Burn, look what I found in my daddy's closet. 
You know, I bet you this is from the big one. You know, WW2. Boy, I bet them were some great times. I know, because I never miss Hogan's heroes on WDBJ7. You know, with Schultz and Hogan and Commandant Clint. Hogan's heroes. Weekdays on your hometown station. You know, Vern, this must be some kind of a cigarette lighter. I know nothing. I see nothing. Yo, hey, I burned his tongue. You know, one of the worst things us tugs go through is school lunch. Yeah, when you guys hit the cafeteria line, us tugs want to find a dark cheek to hide in. Oh, wait, here comes something else. Why? Why? Why would Ernest drink milk with mystery meat? At last, I've developed it. The nightmare of every school child in the world. Homework that multiplies itself day and night. Night and day, homework. More homework over and over and over. No weekends, no TV, no vacation. And best of all, no excuses. <laughs> I know what it was now. You know Bobby's interest in entomology, the study of insects. Well, we're going to have a tumblebug pageant in our backyard, and we were making final preparations for that. We were making little costumes, dresses, little tiny hats, and we're going to have rides and all that kind of stuff, and everybody's invited. That's what we were doing. That's why we're a little bit late. Father the Clown. And you was just... You just wait till your father gets here. Come in. Hi, Mike the Clown. Oh, thank you for coming, Mr. Clown. Ow! That's my dad! <laughs> okay, what seems to be the trouble? Well, actually, it's Skeeter. Skeeter! Sorry, Dad. What do you do? What happened was the kids were having a rest period. Yeah. And while their heads were down on their desks, Skeeter snuck around the room yeah. and tied all of their shoelaces together. Uh-huh. And then he snuck out in the hall and yelled, Free ice, ice cream, cream in the, the cafeteria! cafeteria. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did it work? Half of them fell flat on the floor! <laughs> hey, Vern, you getting in shape? Uh. Or are you just doing homework for your gym class? You know, Vern, keeping your body in shape is important. Keeping your mind in shape is important, too. And that's why you need to get some big books, Vern. Lift up some big books and then read them. Because, Vern, books are as good for the inside of you as exercise is for the outside of you. Are you okay, Vern? And now it's time for Mrs. Simon Simmons and Mind Your Manners. Mrs. Simon Simmons, and it's time for our long word problem in mathematics. Pay close attention. <clears throat> Farmer Jones buys 14 apples for $2.37. He gives two of them to Louise, and four of them have yucky worms in them. Two of them are badly bruised and only sell for 67 cents each. If he sells the remaining apples for 75 cents apiece, will he make a profit? And how much did he deduct for the yucky worms? Farmer John had 14 apples at 2037 cents and four worms, minus Louise's driving record at 67 cents per worm, plus the profit margin of 75 cents per apple equals three to one. That's $53,000 an apple. No, no, that can't be right. I, I forgot to deduct those yucky worms. In the news today, absenteeism in local schools shot up as the dance fever epidemic spread into surrounding counties. Students all over the state boogied helplessly as teachers tried to continue to teach classes. And now for the weather. Children, we only have five minutes left in the period. You need to be finishing up now.
Watch this. You're getting very sleepy. You're going to sleep, aren't you, Bobby? Why, of course you are. All right, class, let's pass those papers to the front. Time is up. Chuck, I would like to see you at my desk after class, please. I can't do it, Vern. I give up. Last night, I heard my mommy tell my daddy that he was sharp as a tack and smart as a whip. That doesn't sound like my daddy. That sounds like a real dangerous dude. Boy, grown-ups sure talk funny. Know what I mean? <laughs> Mama. Very good, Bobby. I can tell you've been practicing. Good job. <laughs> Ernest, are you prepared? Yeah, oh, yeah, I guess. Very well. Begin. And a one, and a two, and a one, two, three, go. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> we'll be right back. Okay, boys, hit it. I did it, Vern. I did it. I accomplished what I set out to do. I passed all my classes in school this week. And I might add, I went right down to the store and bought myself my Rolade O Matic X115 Topographical Time Expander Wristwatch. And burn their right. It does everything. Everything except, uh, except, uh, burn. Do you know what time it is? Don't move. Another action packed lineup from Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. The trap is set. Call Space Ghost. Yes, Piranor. Galactic Patrol calling Space Ghost. Galactic Patrol calling Space Ghost. Galactic Patrol calling Space Ghost. Space Ghost here. What's up? Piranor has broken loose. Help! Help! Uh-oh, trouble. I'd better eject. Unconscious. How could Piranor have done it? Like this. Well done, men. Your trap worked, Piranor. Now you can repay Space Ghost for your long imprisonment. It sure is strange, Chase. Space Ghost is nowhere in sight. We were to meet him at this coordinate. Do you think he's all right? Oh, don't worry about Space Ghost. He can take care of himself. This is Piranor Planet, Space Ghost. Take a good look, or it's the last place you'll ever see. <laughs> Jim, listen. Space Ghost must have turned on his insignia communicator. Yes, Space Ghost. This is the last place you'll ever see, since you will soon be food for my pets, the deadly space piranhas. Space piranhas! That's our clue. Space Ghost has been taken to Piranor's planet. Let's go, Jan. This is Piranor's planet. And our directional finder points right at this mountain. Space Ghost must be in there somewhere. Now you will see what I have planned for you, Space Ghost, during my ten years in prison. Something diabolical, I presume. Diabolical is a mild word for the fate in store for you. 
puts this. Intruders. For them, I have a special welcoming committee. What are they, Jace? Deadly space piranhas. And they spotted us. Come on, Jan. They're gaining on us. Quick, reverse direction. Head for that bench. Full power. Hurry. Here they come. Jeepers, that was close. We have to find Space Ghost. This air shaft must lead somewhere. As usual, the intruders have taken refuge in the ventilating system. For them, there is no escape. A fork in the ventilators. Which way shall we go, Jan? I don't know. It has a cutoff door. The door will hold. We're safe for a while. Look, there's a light at the end of this duct. Good. It may lead us to Space Ghost. Let's go. Revenge is sweet, Space Ghost. <laughs> in that glass tube. And he can't reach his power bands. And now, Space Ghost, meet the deadliest creatures in the universe. My space piranhas, they'll seal your doom. Look, Jan, the grate's loose. Get your invisible power. I get it. We'll drop it on them. <laughs> <laughs> See how eager they are, Space Ghost. Soon my piranhas will shatter the tube and finish you. <laughs> Bombs away! Press my power button, Flip. Thanks, Flip. Now, Piranor, it's my turn. Your destruction comes first. Ghost. No, I've let the space piranhas loose. Save me! This way, Space Ghost! Coming, Chase. Let's get out of here fast. Hurry! We'll cut them off the way we did before. Phony patrol ship with these space piranhas after it. He's being chased by his own deadly piranhas. Piranor himself said, Revenge is sweet, except when it backfires. I had been selected for a most important journey. I was to help fulfill the destiny of the two great ones, Bill and Ted. Wild Stallions rule! Whenever time stands still and trouble moves too fast, to save the future, we must learn about the past. Whoa! Triumphant! 
Chrissy. My most bodacious dream, babe. Bill, are you up? It's Missy. Chrissy? No, Bill, Missy. Chrissy? Missy! I mean, Mom. I'm sorry, Bill. It's after eight and I thought you were up. I heard you talking to someone. Ah, late again. I'll get detention for sure. Missy, quick, toss me some clothes. Relax, Bill. It's Saturday. No school. Did you say Saturday? Uh-huh. Then why did you... Because I need you to pick up the present for your father's surprise birthday party tonight. Whoa! Major spending spree! What are you buying him? Front row center seats to the Iron Maiden concert? No, it's something very special. I found an antique pocket watch just like the one he's always talking about. Oh, right. The one he lost when he was a kid. Exactly. Now be sure to pick it up at the jewelers. I'll take care of everything else. <laughs> Whoa, Ted! We cannot even be heard over the neighborhood dogs! My concern exactly, Bill. Perhaps if we just crank up the amp. Now! I guess Wild Steins has gone to the dogs. Turn him out, Ted. Time to dig deep and give with all you've got. I have got nada, as usual. Dude, that is more money than there is in the world. What'd you do, rob a bank? Uh, no. This is for a watch for my dad's birthday present. Bill, could we not give him my watch and use the money for something important? Like a new amp? Nah, dude. This watch is special. It's just like the one he lost when he was ten. A real antique. Oh. Whoa, what if he never lost a watch in the first place? We could time travel back to when he lost it and borrow it for safekeeping until now. Ted, your brain cells are working overtime. What's motor? We haven't a moment to lose. Right, the music stores close early on Saturday. Most triumphant! Bill? Ted, we've forgotten something most essentially vital. My dad's watch. Ted, we face a dilemma. There is no listing for Eugene Preston in 1956. Try D for dad. Think we'd better call information. Information? What century are you calling, please? Rufus! Gentlemen, what can I do for you? We need to visit my dad when he was 10. Hold a sec, Bill. One century, please. I'm sorry, the number is not listed. Yo, amigo, sorry. Where were you going? Bill's dad. Whoa, no can do, dudes. Oh, wait, hang on again. One moment, please. Century, please. Thank you. Century, please. You there, gentlemen? Why can't we see my dad? You could accidentally wreck your future by going into your past. But if we do not go to the past, and get Bill's dad's watch, Bill's present will be most egregiously ended, and he will have no future. I understand what you're saying, Ted, which kind of scares me, but rules are rules. Oh, gotta go. This is our busiest time. Ted, we are in serious trouble. Do not worry. I have the solution. Hello. A contest? Well, what kind of contest? You can win a color TV, uh, a three-day trip around the world, or uh, a fake diamond ring, if you can answer this question. My phone number when I was ten? Time's wasting. Uh, l let's see. Well, we lived in San Francisco. No number, no prize. Uh, oh, yeah, 555-2435. Five, 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 five. Excellent! Uh, I mean, you win! Goodbye! Or was it... Five 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 nine eight eight one. Got it, dude. All right, San Francisco, 1956. How can you tell? I, mean, I can't see a thing in all this fog. That's how I know, dude. Hello, Ted. Hey, 
That must be my dad. No way. Yes way, Ted. Your dad was once hip? Whoa, the mind boggles! Yeah, I always thought hippitude skipped a generation. Hey, he's going in. And you got a most awesome pocket watch for your birthday. I don't think he's paying you any attention, dude. Try another approach. Crazy, man. I think you started something, dude. Yeah, except I can't start anything with Dad. It's like he's on Mars. Earth to Dad, come in, please. Uh, like, you know, my dad told me to never talk to strangers, and uh, you cats are about as strange as they get. Hey, Dad, I mean Eugene. We're just trying to get the time from you. Like, I'm not Eugene, man, and I don't own a watch. Can you dig it, man? What are you hassling my kid about? We may have made an error, Ted. His dad is most definitely not my grandfather. Bail, Bill! Hey, kid, you got the time? Yeah, I just got a new watch for my birthday. Isn't it neato? This is our stop. Hey, give me back my watch! Ooh. Eugene Preston, you come home right this instant! Outstanding! Be right there, Mom! Thanks for saving my antique railroad watch. Well, that was a waste of time. Whoa! Bill, why are we here? Because my dad said the watch was a railroad watch. But dude, these are railroad tracks. And that is a train! Excuse us, Mr. Engineer type dude, but would you happen to have a railroad style watch on you? You want to know the time? I'll tell you the time. It's late, that's what time it is. Ted, it's the watch. What are you doing slowing down to pick up passengers? Time is money. And I plan to make a lot more money with my new steam drill. Yes, who needs people when you have machines? And speaking of people, get off my train! Whoa! Thanks, heavily pumped up dude. The name's John Henry. And what were you doing on Mr. Morris's private train? Getting thrown off? He is one extremely nasty dude. Workers, nay, friends and family. Hold on, this I gotta hear. In my search to make your jobs unnecessary, I mean easier, I have created this steam driver which will easily do the work of any ten men. Ted, this is way wrong. The fat cat dude means to fire his workers and save bucks with his machines. Once these babies are in place, you'll have a life of ease and comfort. Mr. Morris, I can whip that tin can slugger. Who's that? I'm John Henry, the greatest steel driver of all time. I'm so fast, that machine won't last. Are you willing to bet your job and the jobs of all these workers on that? Sounds like a bum deal to me. What are you offering? What do you want? Ask for his watch. Uh, your watch. You're on. All you have to do is lay more track in ten minutes than my steam drill. <laughs> Which, of course, you can't. Relax, dude. You are guaranteed to win. Yeah, there is a most outstanding song all about it. When, when John Henry was, was a little baby, sitting on his self, 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 he picked self, up a hammer. I hope I work better than you sang. Yeah. yeah. You ready, John Henry? I'm gonna float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. That bucket of bolts will never beat me. If you'd be so kind as to let me borrow John Henry's future watch, I'll time the race. No way. This watch once belonged to Queen Victoria. 
Nice try, dude. I guess we have to use my watch. Go! driving man. Hold on a second. What time is it? I don't know. I don't have a watch. Ugh. You do now? Hey, ornery defeated dude. You owe this man an antique gold pocket watch. Never. It's mine. You haven't seen the last of me. Mighty fine. Maybe too fine for me. Out here on the railroad, I just break it inside a day. Here. You take it. Really? Thank you most appreciatively, Mr. Henry, sir. Dude, we have it. I'll show them. <laughs> There's another kind of Cheerios waiting in your breakfast bowl. It's a honey of an oat. It's honey nut Cheerios. It's the sunny taste of honey. Mm. Like a wholesome and kind of nutty. It's a honey of an oat. It's honey nut Cheerios. Looks good. Taste of honey and nuts, right? Right. And it's part of our nutritious breakfast. Mmm. Honey nutty flavor. Sure is one honey of an oat. It's honey nut Cheerios. <laughs> I do not believe it could get any worse than this. Bill, my most admired ally, it could. That train is escaping with our boot. I got just a thing, if you hurry. Good luck, dudes. Whoa! Bill, suddenly this has become very easy. See? No hands! Dad, you bonehead. That is because the train is doing all the work. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> Tell me why we are here again, dude. It's Switzerland! Land of watches! I thought we would get the watch right out of the factory before anyone had a chance to run over it. But truly, those Swiss travel posters are utterly bogus. Where are the cuckoo clocks? The ski runs? The snow babes? Plus, Bill, what are all these elephants doing in the Alps? I am unsure. Maybe it's a Republican convention? Uh-oh. Hope my dad's not here. You dare to interfere with the conquest of the mighty General Hannibal? If I could get these worthless beasts moving, I'd have them trample you into pita bread! Oh, bringing elephants into the Alps. What was I thinking of? General Bull, if you let us down, I am sure Ted and I can help. Oh, really? Very well. Release them. But fail me, and I'll have you drawn and quartered. That would hurt, dude. Ted, I have an idea. It works with my Uncle Sidney's dog, and he is very nearly an elephant. Excuse me, but my most valued colleague Ted and I feel that to move this animal, we need to use not the stick, but the carrot. We have no carrots, dude. What do we have? Here, no one beta carbons, but high in chocolate. Hmm, ingredients. 
sugar, butter, cocoa. Jumbo! This way! Ted, look! Boxing truck! Fools! Our entire supply of sugar is wasted! Yes, but it makes for nice scenery. Heads up, General Bull! What in this crazy mixed-up world of ours is worth the sacrifice you have made for me? Relax, General Bull, dude. You can be completely off the hook for one of those most excellent Swiss timepieces. Take mine, I insist! Excellent! <laughs> Not. We forgot we're a couple of centuries B.C., before clocks. All right, men of Carthage, follow those elephants! Well, perhaps you should try the bunny slopes before attempting the more difficult advanced runs. Ted, I smell chocolate. Try these, my own personal recipe. Thanks, primitive Swiss tribes, dude. I... Ted, there goes a ride! I've got just the thing, if you hurry. Bill, we have got to stop accepting rides from strangers. Try to find us a real clock. I will try, but it is truly nauseating to read like this. We must not be late for my dad's surprise festivity at 7. Right. What time is it now? It is most definitely 7 o'clock. But not San Dimas time. It must be London time. Whoa! This is what a long clock I would not be able to sleep through. And I thought Wild Stallions was loud. Right on time. What? We are half an hour late. That would not do. Driver, faster! Dude, we have a most stratospheric fall ahead of us. Do not worry, Ted. When we get about one foot from the ground, all we have to do is jump. Bill, you are truly brilliant, no matter what your report card says. And just who are you? I am Bill S. Preston Esquire. And I am Ted Theodore Logan. And together, we are Wild Stallions! Well, we are Queen Victoria, and we are to be crowned Empress of India, and we are late. How many people are in here, dude? <laughs> that was most rude, dude. True, Ted, but the carriage was quite crowded, what with all the people with Queen Victoria. Queen Victoria? Hey, isn't that the dudette Mr. Morris got the watch from? Beef eaters, arrest them! No need to get violent, surly furry-hatted dudes. <laughs> Those blokes have gone after the queen! That way! With this crown, I proclaim the Queen Victoria, Empress of... Stop them! I think we lost him, Ted. Sorry, Governor. Oops. We haven't the time for all this nonsense. We have proclamations to proclaim and grand openings to attend. And how can we be Empress of India without a proper crown? Excuse me, Miss Queen Bear, I believe my partner Bill and I can help. Ted, my most valued friend, you better have something truly brilliant in mind. Watch. If I may be so bold... Behold! The Empress of India! Ted, you did it! And not a moment too soon. We are already late for a grand opening. We think. Does anybody have the proper time? If I might be of service again, it's five minutes to seven. But that is San Dimas time, dude. So early? This watch never worked. Quick, 
quickly. Time is money. What shall be your reward for your service to the crown? Uh, how about your broken watch? The royal watch? But we've had it so long. But it is broken. And we will even throw in this box of antique Swiss chocolates from a very old recipe. We'll take them! I hope we have not missed the birthday cake. Ted, this is most abominable. Someone has scratched words all over the inside of this watch. Bogus. But it's too late now, Bill. We must give him this or nothing. You're late. All the guests are gone. Did you get it? Yeah, but... You didn't even wrap it. No. And plus... Oh, I've got your real present, sweetiekins. But it isn't wrapped in pretty paper. Oh, that's okay. Well, you're all the pretty wrapping I need. <laughs> oh, Eugene, you're so cute. I hope you like it. I don't believe it. This is the same watch I lost on my 10th birthday. No way! Yes, as you guys say, way. It, it was an antique railroad watch owned by John Henry. Well, see the inscription? Time is money. <laughs> oh, you are one in a million, Missy. I don't know how you did it. I have little help from Bill and Ted. Excellent! <laughs> Another action packed lineup of Saturday morning cartoon max out.
thundering across the stars to save the universe from the monster minds. Jay searches for his father to unite the magic root and lead his lightning league to victory over the changing form of Sawboss. Wheeled warriors explode into battle. Lightning strikes. There's a power that comes from deep inside of you. It's every day reaching toward the light. And you know there's a long way ahead of you. But when your wheels get you there, things will turn out right. Just keep on turning. Try to stop the greatest armada of my vines ever unleashed. Row together, my lovely ones. Go to and overwhelm them. What the? Some difficulty here? Look at the size of that monster mine shrubbery in Sector 37 Delta. They just don't come that big. And it's not even trying to take over those planets. <laughs> the scope's got to be on the blink. No, apparently they do come that big. Chase? Our nemesis is doing something rather startling. What's Sawboss up to now? Something on a rather large scale. Sawboss must want to overrun someplace pretty badly. It's a broken scanner, isn't it, Master? There's nothing out there that big. Uh, Herc, plot where those vines are heading. Let's get there first and see why. And it started out to be such a nice day. That's where they're going, kid. Looks like it used to be a kind of a nice place. Set her down, Herc. Whatever's so valuable to Sawboss on that planet. might be even more important to us. There's got to be an open piece of ground here someplace. They look like huge dandelions, don't they, Brock? They even feel like dandelions. What happened? The engines have said good night. We're out of control.
are those? They bear an astonishing resemblance to strawberries. Mmm, definitely strawberries. Everything's gigantic here. They're all so happy to be so healthy and well fed. It could be that intense sunlight. Or it could be the soil. Boy, if I'd grown up here, I would have really grown up. <laughs> and so would monster mines. No wonder all those vines are coming here. If a strawberry is that huge here, then their vehicles would... Oh no! Jace! The vines will reach this soil in three hours, five minutes, and 17 seconds. Uh, approximately. No problem. I can get us out of here in 47 seconds. Exactly. Come on, kid. Even you have to know when it's time to... To see if anybody lives here who can help us stop this invasion. You got 40 seconds now. Plus the hour it'll take me to clean the dandelions out of my engines. Quick draw. Activate defense mode program. Command acknowledged. Barge defense mode. And, uh, bring back a little cash, will you? The only life the locator's finding is these plants! Jace, be careful! You're hurting me! Sorry, Flora. Hey, Hotcha. I think maybe you ought to come back here a minute. What for? We got us some company. Get a move! are about to make contact! The natives are fleeing in terror! Of course they are. As will the entire universe. The barge! I see the lightning leap barge on the planet! How convenient for them to be there, as the fruits of their destruction grow to ripeness.
We come as friends to help you resist invaders. <laughs> oh, the vines, you mean? Our crusader slice them down before they touch ground. They're not stopping that one, I promise you. We better start working together fast. You help us take them. No invader leaves our planet alive. Vehicles each sold separately. Some parts not be used with some toys. New from Mattel. With the fun shape of honeycomb, you never know what you'll imagine. Mm. If you're eagle-eyed, you can watch them glide while you're fortified. Honeycomb! Yeah. With some concentration, you're a big sensation with this quick creation. Honeycomb! When you improvise, you can harmonize what you appetize. Honeycomb! So when you use your brain, you'll be entertained. Honeycomb cereal, part of this complete breakfast. Sweet, crunchy, and more fun than you ever imagined. You can make the good guys better. Trailblazer, you can make the bad guys better. Beat Walker. Wheel Warriors. Quick changing fighting machine. Arm force. I'll disarm you. Quick stack and attack. You can stack a cack 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 and attack cack 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 cack. Warriors. East Walker Trailblazer and Arm Force each sold separately. Batteries not included. Some parts not for use with some toys. New from Mattel. that little one hide. Ah, it doesn't matter. On your feet! They wait for us at the castle.
Jace. Herc! Efficient, aren't they? You have trespassed. I beg you to listen to me. There isn't much time left. Indeed, there is not. Like all who trespass here, you will meet our new leader in single combat unto the death. Who is he? I demand to speak to... These intruders have interrupted our ceremonies long enough. Let us continue with the test. Who wishes to prove himself worthy to replace me as your leader? Should you fail to remove the shield from the stone, will you accept the punishment? I will. <laughs> What happens to him? We have dungeons where there are hungry beasts. And I tell you that there are hungry beasts outside who will destroy you. Enough. You will fight me now. A castle. Maybe that's the one they took them to. Give him your weapon. First, I too would like to try to remove the shield from the stone. You? <laughs> of course. The challenge is open to all. If you fail, be prepared for the beast in our dungeons. Gillian, will your wishes be with me? They will indeed, my boy. Foolish. Meet me in combat. Your end will be swifter. Invader, our strongest knights have failed at this task. They're coming! The monster mines are coming! one they'll listen to. Armed Force, home in on my signal. Send the command code to the rest of the vehicles. Boone, tell them to follow you outside. Outside, man! Everyone outside! 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 outside. outside. Fight bravely, Jace, because this will be your last battle. I am too powerful now. On force! Tell me why 
what to do. Ring of light, magic might. That's it. The sun. Get these knights on top of the vehicles. Oh, excuse me. Knights on the vehicles. Shields up. Lightning strike. Shields up. All vehicles, a slow swivel to the right. Enjoy your triumph. There are other planets and other galaxies. You won't win forever. Forces of the Black Light, remove me from this place! Thank you for allowing your new leader to depart with us. I know your next one will be every bit as courageous. We've learned, my friends, that not all intruders are our enemies. Creature King is heading for Jupiter with a horde of mind-controlled creatures. The Creature King? <laughs> yes, he's back. What's this? Space Ghost. Yes, and I'm ordering you to call off your mad plan. No man orders the Creature King. Then I'll be forced to stop you. How are you going to do it, Space Ghost? I don't know. I'm more concerned with those helpless creatures than I am with the Creature King. Couldn't we force him down? Good idea, Jan. And the uninhabited planet Sator would be the perfect place. Hold her on, hover, Jace. I'm ejecting. My best chance to force him down is to destroy his power units. Come, Space Ghost. You'll find my space arc is impregnable. You destroyed my power, but I'm not through yet. Look, Jace, Space Ghost forced him down. He's landing. Go, creatures! Attack Space Ghost! Never seen anything like those creatures before. And look what's coming out of the top. Go, my creatures. Make 
Space Ghost welcome. <laughs> chance is to activate my force field. Now to try and slow down that giant bat. Space Ghost is defeated. <laughs> What are we going to do, Space Ghost? There's no sense in fighting those creatures. It's the source I'm after. Stay here. I'm going after the Creature King. He said to stay here, Chase, but look what's coming. <laughs> it's your invisible power, Jan. <laughs> Space Ghost attacks again. Let's see what he can do against my force shield. The Creature King really has come up with a force shield. How about that? Even though we're invisible, that bat knows where we are. Yes, and it's calling up reinforcements. Look! A giant spiny armadillo! And look! A winged serpent! If I can't get through the force shield, I'll go under it. Good, my obedient creatures. You have been surrounded. Pull them until I rid myself of Space Ghost. Space Ghost! Yes, it's Space Ghost. And first I'll destroy your power over those creatures. And now you. Never! No one will ever control the Creature King! I don't get it. With the controls gone, they're just wandering around without a master. And it's our job to hurt them back to the Ark. How? With electro guns that won't hurt them. Let's go. Get along, little doggy. Get along. Giddy up. Come on, giddy up. Good work. You've got them all back in the Ark. Well, now that they're back in their cages, what are we going to do with them? How about starting a zoo? Good idea, Jan. It'll be the first zoo in the galaxy. Yeah. See, Jace, I guess girls are good for something. <laughs> Now return to the real Ghostbusters.
junk, will ya? bridge has been taken over by creatures of unknown origin. The purpose of seizure is not known at this time. No demands have been made. Now, Janine, what is it? Listen. We now go to Flem Nachman live on the scene. <laughs> Ghostbusters! <laughs> hmm. Trolls. Trolls? Trolls! Of course! Check Tobin's spirit guide. The only reference to trolls is fabled dwarves living in caves or under bridges. That's it. Like in the Three Billy Goats Gruff. The Three Billy Goats Gruff, Ray. Yeah, the troll under the bridge. And they can be mean, let me tell you. Don't you just love taking the kids for a drive? Quiet down back there. Look at the scenery or we'll go home. They don't trust humans. They don't want anything to do with people or cities. I wonder what they're after. Troll, I don't believe it. It's New York. It's Monday morning. Where else would trolls be but under the Queensboro Bridge, huh? I ask you. Trolls under the Queensboro Bridge. It's probably dogs or, or rats or something. Yeah, Attention, this is a police. 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 Very big dogs or very big rats. The Ghostbusters! Ghostbusters! 
Stand back, ladies and gentlemen. The Ghostbusters are here. We'll check it out. Wow, look at that mess. That's got to be troll handiwork. Hey, I have an idea. We can't wait to hear it, Ray. The trolls attack vehicles. Let's drive that dough one onto the bridge and see what happens. It's worth a shot. Just remember, the trolls are vicious, fearless, and very mean. Vicious, fearless, and very mean, huh? Oh, Ray, you're driving. Great idea, Ray. Let's drive Ecto-1 onto the bridge and see what happens. What do we do now? We blast them! No, wait. I wouldn't do that. Even if we were able to get out and blast them, as Ray says, before they completely destroyed Ecto-1, which is beyond probability, the streams might turn the trolls into stone, or... Or what, Egon? The particle streams could make them bigger and very likely meaner. <laughs> Maybe we could talk to him. Great idea, Winston. Go on. Tell him I said hi. All those in favor of Peter going out and talking to the trolls, raise their hands. Uh, me, Dr. Venkman, you troll. What's the problem here? I don't think they like me. <laughs> They don't speak English. Any suggestions? Perhaps I should speak to the gentleman. Hey, Peter! Egon understands him. He can translate. Tell him to hurry, Ray. Gravik Nihayas Vin Spuko. It seems they've lost a member of their group. They want him back. Uh, tell him we'll find him if they back off. The pupa, nik nik plidap. says that we have 12 hours to deliver their friend, or else they'll send in the fireflies. Fireflies? But what's so bad about fireflies? Turn to the real Ghostbusters. Listen, the best way to find a troll is to, to think like a troll. Go for it, Ray. Okay, I'm a troll and I'm lost. Where would I go? Oh no, tell us, Ray. Someplace narrow. Darn. Empty. Like your head? Oh, come on, guys. If we don't find that troll and soon, those firefly things are gonna barbecue this city. Now get serious. I am serious. No, that's scary. Ray has a point. What about the Holland Tunnel? It's dark, narrow. That's it. That's where I'd go if I were a troll. No, no, not a tunnel. He's here for the bright lights, the excitement, Times Square. Let's split up.
You guys go down to Times Square. We'll take the tunnel. There could always be giant ants, like in Santa Clara in 1950. Not funny. I love doing that to him. Now, come on, let's go. We haven't got much time. How are we going to find anything with the traffic jammed up? We don't have time to waste. Let's get out and look around. There he is. Get him! Somebody stop that troll! Come back here. Nice troll. I've got to say this, Peter. You really should get into better shape. And I gotta say this, Egon. I never liked you. Or your family. Or your dog. There! Now we got him! Okay, I'll hit him low. You hit him high. Go! Well, now what do we do? I hear New Jersey is beautiful this time of year. Thanks, Egon. You're such a joy to me in my declining years. Nothing. We've been looking for hours and not a trace of the troll. Yeah, and I'm getting pretty hot and tired, too. Say, now there's just what I need. Come on! I'll tell you the truth, Winston, I'm worried. Those fireflies are gonna level the city unless we find that troll. But the odds are against us. Yeah, the odds of us seeing that thing are a million to one. Oh yeah, strawberry world here. Thanks. Arch. Arch? Troll! Wait! Ah! Follow that coon! Whoa! Doesn't look good, does it? Time is running out. Not Larry. So I stick them up there good. Kill them. Fuck! Not Larry, fuck! Come on, Peter, grab a telescope. I don't want to look at the city, Ray. I'm tired, I ache, and I want to take a nap. It's the most efficient way of covering a lot of ground fast. We have only minutes left. Egon's right. Do you want to see New York destroyed? Ask me after I've had some sleep, okay? Nighty night. I've spotted something. I think I see him. Take a look, Ray. Where? Where? I don't see him. Just a band. Behind the band, by the alley. We got him. Let's go. We'll get the elevator. You bring Peter. You, now. Come on, guys. Just a little nap. I'll get you for this someday. We have less than an hour to find him and take him back to the bridge. That's it. Music. Very good, Ray, but this is no time to dance. I'm telling you, the trolls like music. He was dancing near a band. Look, over there. It's showtime. Grab him!
He must have picked up the word on the streets. How are you going to keep him under the bridge after they've seen Times Square, huh? I like this guy. He's my kind of people. Troll, Peter. Troll! Whatever, Ray. He's a party animal, and I like him. We better get him back to the bridge. Time's just about up! Actually, time is up. to see a charwoman. Party. Later, we gotta swat some flies first. Egon, what would happen if the streams hit those things? I don't know. Why doesn't that surprise me? Armed proton gun. Look out! I just hope you appreciate this. Peter, it's after the troll. Have a drink, pal. Aha. Yeah, party. Only next time, let's all go to your place. All clear? Ta-da! All's well that ends well, huh? They'll be back, Peter. So? We'll take care of them. Very likely there'll be more of them, Peter. A lot more. <laughs> we have to turn the troll in, Peter. There's no other way. Those fireflies will destroy the city. All right, I'll... No. Wait a sec. Uh -huh. If we hit a troll with a particle beam, he either turns to stone or gets bigger, right? Correct. Party. You are just the troll I was looking for. Perhaps. He wouldn't come quietly, so we had to blast him. Sorry, he'll be okay in about 500 years or so. All right, coast is clear. Thanks again for the rush job. We appreciate it. <laughs> Anytime, Dr. Vinkman. Anytime. 
Tell him to hurry up or he'll miss his train. And tell him to go to this address. Thank you, Peter. You guys teach him that. All aboard! Oh, really? Yo! Double B! Double B! This whale we send him to a partying friend of mine in Chicago. He owes me five bucks. After he gets a load of our little partying friend, I call the debt paid. Wouldn't you? with Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming up next.
to go exploring a Greek island. I've had the Thunderhawk shipped ahead. Exploring? No way. I'm too tired. Tired? Your first trip to the Aegean Sea and you say you're tired? Getting here is what made me tired. Is sailing stuff is hard work. You're the one who wanted to learn all about crewing on a sailing ship. Crewing? You mean slaving. Looks like mutiny, Matt. I'll stay with them if you want to go ahead. Okay. Crew is hereby granted one day to be lazy. See you later. Be careful. Every muscle in my body hurts. Mine too. You're a machine. You can't be tired. Can I be overloaded? Low on power? Worn out and in desperate need of an overhaul? Yes. Then that's what I am. I'd never want to go sailing again. Hoist the mizzen mast, gaff the jibs, mow the yard arms. Next, they'll probably want us to put out the fire. What fire? The one up there. Bruce, fire! We're on fire! Man the boats! Robots and children first! Keep up! Here I come! No, Matt. I never saw anything catch fire so fast in my life. Well, first we'll find a hotel for these two. Then you and I are going to do some investigating. Oh, I'm taking an airplane home. I don't get it, Matt. Why look up here if the ship caught fire down at the ocean? Scott said the fire started at the top of the sails and came down. So whatever started it must have come from outside the ship. From higher up, maybe we can see. Huh? Everything within this circle is burned to a crisp. It sure is. The heat must have been incredible. What could cause something like this? I have no idea. But I'll lay odds that it was the same thing that hit the mast of our ship. Come on. I'm punching in the location of this spot in our ship. Thunderhawk's navigational computer should be able to triangulate and give me... Ah, there we go. The blast of heat came from that direction. Let's see what's out there. Well, I don't see anything that looks like it could create a giant heat ray, do you? No. I do see a giant, though. Huh? Oh, I read about this place. It's the New Solari Amusement Park. It's supposed to open next week. That statue of the Greek god Zeus is the park symbol. What an impressive-looking amusement park. The whole island is owned by some eccentric millionaire. It's Mayhem in Switchblade. Is he the eccentric millionaire? I don't know, but he's sure mad about something. He's always mad about something. Mask, I've got to keep them away from here. They could ruin everything. He knocked out the lasers. Hang on to your stomach. Better than a ride at 
That's Hilaria Burke. He's still right on our tail. Okay. Let's see if he'll follow this move. This is almost too easy. Satellite link. Matt Tracker calling Boulder Hill Computer. Ready. Encoded transmission. Select mask agents best suited for mission in Mediterranean. Recommended personnel. Bruce Sato, mechanical engineer and design specialist. Brad Turner, expert motorcycle and helicopter pilot. Vehicle code name, Condor. Hondo McLean, weapon specialist and field strategist, vehicle code name, Firecracker. Dusty Hayes, auto and marine stunt driver, vehicle code name, Gator. Gloria Baker, champion race driver, black belt in Kung Fu, vehicle code name, Gator. Function, co-pilot. Selection complete. Personnel approved. Assemble Mobile Armored Strike Command. What do we know about Solaria Park, Matt? Nothing. We learned that the construction was all done in secret. So it's up to us to find out what's really going on out there. You got it. Let's move. things again. They sink. I've had enough jumping overboard. Thank you. I hate getting wet. So, uh, this is Greece. It's beautiful. Yes, it is, but we've got no time for sightseeing. Solaria Park is still a few miles across the sea. Let's move it. to complain, but uh, Firecracker doesn't exactly float you. Sit tight, Honda. We haven't forgotten about you. The bird of prey has not only wings for flying, but feet for lifting. Lift up. Keep an eye open, everyone. If Venom is on that island, they're sure to see us coming. Roger. Better keep one peel behind you, cowboy. There's something following you. I know, and it's not a fish. Let's see if you can outdrive a heat-seeking torpedo. Watch it, Matt. We got company, too. 
Whoa! I feel like a baby swinging in a cradle. Hang on. I'll get it. It's too deep. The lasers won't penetrate. Well, I'm running out of fancy turns. This new raven's pretty as a lady and friendly as a crocodile, Calhoun. Tracker here. Assemble mask. Venom's back in business. It's the Venom L bar. I've been expecting you, mask. Convert raven to jet mode. Mask, Boulder Hill, and new raven, hurricane, and outlaw. Each sold separately with a picture. Gotcha, hurricane. Fire tire. Mask, where illusion is the ultimate weapon. An incredible secret is revealed. When innocent-looking vehicles and ordinary men become an awesome fighting team, it's the secret of Mask, where illusion is the ultimate weapon. Yeah, I know the secret formula. Mask vehicles each sold separately with action figures. I'll cut him off. Jackhammers. Prepare for battle. Thunderhawk headed for an ambush. Get trap. Wrong, Jagger. Wings up. You're neutralized. Mask, where illusion is the ultimate weapon. In another second, that thing's gonna be in our back seat. Gloria, can't you give it a nudge with the aura mask? Not while it's underwater, but, but maybe we can bring it up with a whirlpool depth charge. Next time it comes back, lift me up and turn me around. Will do, Hondo. But what for? The Hypno Headlights. Um, have to hit the autopilot. Fast thinking, Hondo. We'll be in dreamland until we can get you to the island. This is gonna be close. He's behind those rocks. Let's get him. Oh, no! He's gone. I don't get it. He ought to be right here. He clean disappeared. Start checking out the island, Hondo. We're going after Mayhem. Go get him, Matt! He's going behind the island. Stay in his tail, Brad. I'll go over the island and cut him off. Roger. Going, Miles. You got a surprise coming. Where did he go? Yep, Sly Rax pulled the same shenanigan on us. Gone like a ghost. So, what's our next move, Matt? Start searching the whole island? Dig not with the hands when the shuffle lies waiting. Aw, oh, Bruce, holy cow. He just means that whatever Venom is up to, Solaria Park must be involved. It's the obvious place to start looking. Boy, look at all the rides. This place will be great when it opens. Spread out, everyone. Look for, well, look for anything suspicious. I knew they'd go to the park. So, it's almost high noon. They can't stop us now. 
<laughs> Come on, Gloria. Let's start in the fun house. <laughs> you never change, do you, Dusty? Nothing suspicious in here, just funny mirrors. Just a second, Dusty. Look at this. Must be some kind of piston. But why here? Matt, this is Hondo. I'm in the video arcade, only there's something weird about it. There aren't any video games. Just a big, dark building full of mirrors. Lots of mirrors. We're finding the same sort of thing, Hondo. The rides, the buildings, everything is just false fronts and mock-ups. Nothing in Solaria Park is real, except these silly mirrors. Hey, Mayhem, are you going to let them have it? In due time, I'll unleash enough power to control the entire Mediterranean area. What happened to the bad guys? They lose their nerve? The farther the water goes out, the bigger the wave that returns. Right. Keep on your toes, everyone. They're up to something. Greetings, masked fools. Welcome to Solaria Park. Woo! Sounds like that big wave Bruce was talking about. Look! Get moving. We've got to get out of here before we're all trapped in this machinery. It's heat ray. It can use that mirror to direct the main mirror's energy in any direction. And those solar energy collectors will store energy so the statue will be invincible, even at night. Let's move it. If I'm right, no weapon on Earth will be able to get near that thing once it's fully charged up. What first, Matt? We've got to get the Thunderhawk's thermite bombs down to the base of the statue. But, Matt, that old bomb won't get through a heat ray. It'll blow before it ever reaches the statue. Not if we all do our part. Ah, our hero's coming. I'll give him a taste of just minimum power. Whoa, it's stronger than I thought. We got our work cut out for us. Difficult target, but I'll get him. Matt, I'm pushing the condor to the limit. Any harder, and my engine will blow. Okay, Brad, we're ready here. Lift up! On! They gave up too easily. What? Those fools think they can stop me. It's our turn, Dusty. Let's get out of here. We'll just have to keep our fingers crossed. I've got to melt that ice, but I still don't have full power. Let's get out. 
out of here. No, no! At seven years premiere, I figure Venom just landed about 60 million years of bad luck. <laughs> uh, you're a little young to be working on cars, aren't you? I hope you're doing it safely. Oh, sure I am. I have the handbrake set really tight and all the wheels blocked. Well, that's good. Uh, just whose car is this anyway? It's yours. We knew how much you missed the old Thunderhawk, so we all worked double time to get this new one ready. Ah, uh, thanks. Well, what do you know? Lunch. Mmm, finger licking good. Dumpty 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 dum. Wow, that looks tempting. But us termites gotta be careful. Those calories add up, you know. If I don't find the ant soon, I'll starve to death. Uh-oh. Here comes that nasty old anteater. I'm sure glad he doesn't like termites. Out of my way, you rotten termite. You're blocking the road. <laughs> makes me so mad. Good morning, baloney. A baloney out for a walk. And I'm saying good morning to a baloney. Aha! Uh -huh. I thought so. And then, hey, that's my lunch. And you're my dinner. <coughs> Hello, cousin. Got no time to talk now. That anteater's after me. I'll see you later. Come on in. It's later than you think. And I think I'm hungry. Don't panic, Ant. Help is on the way. I shouldn't be eating between meals, but we insects have to help each other in an emergency. <laughs> It's things like this sometimes give me a headache. Thanks a lot. Glad I was able to help. Come on, follow me. Hey, where are you taking me? To my pad, Cousin Ant. This is it. Like, wow, what a place. All right, Ant, I see you. He's after me again. Come on, Ant, be my guest. Nice of you, Term. That's OK. It ain't going to do you no good to hurt. <laughs> Better come out, Ant, or I'll come in after you. Don't laugh. With a nose like this, it's possible. Oh, 
hold him for a while. Gee, thanks again. Don't mention it. In a situation like this, who do I call? A doctor or a plumber? What's all the commotion about? Oh, that's just my kinfolk visiting me. I hope they leave soon. They're eating me out of house and home. Hundreds of rotten termites, and all I need is one delicious ant. Uh-oh. I better leave. That ant eater's back. So long. Oh, no, you don't, ant. Well, looks like I'll have to go off my diet again. I got your corner there. Better give up. You're not a termite, and you can't eat your way out of this one. Why do I have so much trouble? I'm bigger than a termite. Boy, I'm getting fat like an aardvark. You rotten termite, take my advice and stay out of my way. I'm gonna let you have it right where it hurts the most. Rotten termite. You know, I think I'm getting another headache. Thanks a lot, kinfolk. Gee, you have a nice family. Yeah, but they sure eat a lot. If there's one thing I hate, it's smart aleck termites. I'll hide in this closet and wait for that ant to show up. Stupid termites. If they think they can fool me again, they got another thing coming. Just as I thought, it's locked. I'll break it down. You know, I just happened to think of something. But I forgot what it was. Well, better be on my way. Thanks again, Term. Aha. Uh -huh. I just remembered. Lunch. Hey, yeah. Uh-oh. It's him again. That's a giant leap for an ant, but one small step for an oddball. Or was it one small step for an ant, but a giant leap for an oddball? Hmm. Boy, am I stuffed. I hope that ant got away. Now, where did he go? Hey, ant. I'd like a word with you. You know, it's like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Hey, Ann! Now, how can I find a needle without a haystack? Aha! I saw him. OK, you Ann. Time for lunch. You won't believe this, but my name is Ardvark, and I was looking for an ant. Believe me, I was telling you the truth. You see, there was this ant. We were going to have lunch together. I hope you won't make a hasty decision. Couldn't we make a deal, though? I guarantee it will make you feel better in the morning. Believe me. Thanks again, Term. You and your kinfolk must come over and have lunch with me sometime. Do you mind if I take a rain check, cousin? I got to get back on my diet. Yo, Joe! He'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe is there. Save the day. He never gives up. He's always there, fighting for freedom over land and air. GI Joe. GI Joe. GI Joe is the code name for America's daring, highly trained special mission force. Its purpose: to defend human freedom against Cobra, a ruthless terrorist organization determined to rule the world. Some he'll stay till the fight's won. G.I. Joe will dare. G.I. Joe will dare. G.I. Joe. Attention, nations of the world. This is Cobra Commander. In the last 12 hours, Cobra has launched an all-out attack upon your energy resources. In the North Sea, Cobra Rattlers have reduced your offshore drilling stations to rubble. In the desert, our Hiss battalions have halted production at every major oil field. We have severed vital links in the Alaskan pipeline. Absorb
third. This fleet of tankers carrying South American oil to the US. And now, witness the final phase of Cobra's plan to stop the world! <laughs> Governments of the world, the choice is yours. Surrender control of your nations to Cobra, or face the nightmarish prospect of a new dark age. Could you trace the transmission, Sparks? Sorry, Colonel. I tried, but Cobra bounced that transmission off a satellite. Then their base could be anywhere in the world. Did you receive the transmission, Duke? Loud, clear, and ugly, Colonel Sharp. But what about the tankers? Where'd they go? Search me, Duke. They just evaporated. No, they didn't. Cobra's got a cloaking device that makes them invisible, even to our most sensitive instruments. And those tankers were the world's last hope. Without that oil, every industrialized nation will be paralyzed. Not if G.I. Joe can help it, Colonel. Scarlet, we located a Cobra safe house on the west coast. Rose garden, white picket fence. You'd never figure it for a Cobra hideout. If there's a lead to those tankers there, I want it. And I like a man who knows what he wants. Kyo Joe! Leader Joe to Shark One. You fellas catch Cobra's little TV show? Yeah, lousy acting, but the special effects weren't bad. Can the comedy torpedo. Cobra's got a floating base 50 miles due south of your present position. Take it out. And find me a clue to those missing tankers. Hey, piece of fish cake, Duke. Leave it to me and Mr. Warp here. You have a peculiar sense of humor, mister. Yo! I commend you, Destro. Your cloaking device has assured Cobra's complete and final victory. So it seems, but do not proclaim our triumph prematurely. Even now, the forces of G.I. Joe may be moving against us. <laughs> but first, Destro, they must find us. And how long can they search the globe before their fuel is gone? <laughs> You display considerable cleverness, more than I have come to expect. But Destro does not celebrate until his wars are won. Attack! Open fire! Attack! Attack! Open fire! Stay in your seat, bunny man. I tried to warn you. Take us back down, low over the water, and drop me off. While I flit around up here like some turbocharged pelican? No. I'm a diver too. I'm more at home 50 fathoms down. Yeah, well, we'll line up there permanently if we don't cooperate. Fine. We'll try it your way. <laughs> Didn't mean to scare you. Oh no. <laughs> Got to make this shot perfect. Evacuation procedures! We're going down! Good, the comedian did his job. We are late now. Party's breaking up. Everybody's leaving. Not everybody. Sonic Rifles! My brain's doing a hula! I hate loud noises. I like it quiet down here. I said quiet! That's better. Thanks, 
Sal. I owe you one. No big deal. Forget it. Come on. Maybe they left behind a clue to those missing tankers. Talk about your long shots. Why are we scouting for tankers over the jungle? These jungles produce oil and diamonds. And you saw the sparkler on that cloaking device. Dark one to leader Joe. Go ahead, Torpedo. I read you. Uh, remember that floating cobra base? It makes a real nifty aquarium. Find anything on the tankers. Zilch. Even the goldfish swear they know nothing about it. Cow! Cobra fighter! Closing fast! So almost cashed in our chips. Forget it. You did good up there. We're alive, aren't we? Yes, for the moment, mate. But we'll fix that straight away. Meet your blood. And mates, meet me mom. The Yellow Mamo. Indigenous they are. Tribe hasn't been out of this forest for thousands of years. Which explains how you could sucker them onto your side. Till you, they'd never met a snake with legs. Watch your tongue, Duke. These are Cobra's allies. We've worked out what you might call a mutually beneficial exchange of resources. Yeah. I'm sorry to bother you, sir. I'm lost and I haven't any money. Might I use your telephone? Beat it, lady. I've got no time for... Oh, uh, please. It won't take long. I said beat it, Granny. Okay, sonny. You... Joe! No, thanks. I'm only hungry for information. <laughs> Happy landing, sport! Don't tell me you're actually going to be sensible and surrender. No, not quite. <laughs> Anyone awake down there? Over, friend. Let's talk tankers. Where's Cobra hiding them? Only Cobra Commander and Destro know that. You're sure? You wouldn't lie to me, would you? No, no, not, not with my life in your hands. That I can believe. Attention, nations of the world! Cobra will tolerate no further delays. Your indecision carries a terrible price as I shall now demonstrate. Another tanker will be detonated each hour, destroying your precious oil until Cobra's demands are met. Yahoo! What the devil are you so happy about? We just lost a tanker. But we may have won the fleet. I've been working on a scanner that detects remote control frequencies, and Cobra's got to be detonating those ships by remote control. If I can get it working within an hour, the next time they blow a tanker up, it'll lead us right to them. 
Well, don't just sit around explaining it to me. Get on it, man. You've got 56 minutes. How'd you win these men over, blood? Promise them the Southern Hemisphere when Cobra conquers the world? Hardly anything so grandiose. They're at war, you see, with a neighboring village. Cobra gave them superior firepower so they could win that war. Real generous of you. And what does Cobra get in return? Nothing these lads will miss. Just the means to stop the world. Oh, and do... Ace, he must have been injured when we hit the water. I think he's bleeding internally. Well, now, we can't have that, can we? Here, you two, hoist him up. Come along. Here we are. Hold it right here. Ah, Cobra's capable of mercy too, you know. You got me word, Ace. Your suffering's almost over. Put him out of his misery. G.I. Joe will return after these messages. After these messages, we'll be right back. He'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe! It's Major Blood in the Cobra Copter. They're after Gung Ho. Get the G.I. Joe Dragonfly Copter. Wild Bill to the rescue. Major Blood, look. Let's get out of here. Cobra's turning tail. Want to lift good buddy? G.I. Joe! G.I. Joe Dragonfly Copter comes with Wild Bill, other figures and equipment, each sold separately from Hasbro. Now, back to G.I. Joe. Come on, lads. Evo! The boy suffered long enough. Wait! The pain's gone! It's a miracle! Cobra's victims, whether they know it or not. Let's get out of here. What are you waiting for, Blooming Mother's Day? After those two! Sparks, how's it coming? It's coming. I don't know if it'll work, but it's coming. It's got to work. Sparks, what happened? Not now, Colonel. I've got work to do. Well, kick my tail section. Quiet. Cobras turned their village into an airbase. And that's not the half of it. Look, a diamond mine? That's where Cobra gets the jewels to power the clunking device. You got it, Whiz Kid. Only make it past tense. We're gonna... Intruders! G.I. Joe! Stop them! Don't let them escape alive! Ace, get one of those rattlers. Radio the Joes and tell them what we found. What about you? I'm gonna shut down this little operation. Halt! Stay where you are! <laughs> Eat hot knuckles, snake face. Sure hope my timing's as good as I think it is. Yo, Mister? <laughs> Come on, baby. Work! Scarlet, I just contacted Duke and Ace. Duke, Ace, where are you? Are you all right? Alive, well, and 38,000 feet over the jungle in an enemy fighter. Oh, no. The hour's up. Where's Sparks? What's happening? 
Colonel. There's another Cobra transmission, Duke. I'll patch you in. Sparks, where are you? Right here. One full hour has passed with no decision from your so-called leaders. Watch and see what their delay has cost you. Yahoo! The secret word is Patagonia. Cobra secret base is off the coast of Patagonia. The tankers are 200 miles due east of the Falklands. I traced the detonation signal. My scanner worked. Well, quit Patagonian yourself on the back and mobilize an assault force. Move it. It's moving. No word from the world's governments. My patience has its limits. Indeed. And it appears they have been reached. Our victory would have been simpler had they surrendered. But let us be content to detonate all the other takers. Yes. And to watch as civilization crashes into ruin. No! It's impossible! They can't have found us! Activate defense systems! through one of your engines. You should have signaled me. Let's go get Chrome Dome. Yo, Joe! You're ingenious, Detonator. Let G.I. Joe straight to our door. Impossible. Even G.I. Joes do not have a scanner capable of tracing my Detonator signal. We do now, Destro. Yo, Joe! Chrome cheeks, there's a nice dank cell waiting for. Fool, oh, did you truly think me defenseless? You will pay for your stupidity, Destro. Duke, you okay? Destro, Cobra Commander, where? You're okay, and the tankers are safe. That's more important. Yeah, we'll nail them next time, Duke. Don't feel bad, Duke. We got the job done, even if those creeps did get away. Yeah, right. Well, may as well get back to base, huh? May as well. Or you could take me to dinner and a movie, now that everything's working again. Now you're cooking with gas. I just hope we can find a parking place.
switch and what do you get? Number four, electricity, electricity. When you're in the dark and you want to see, you need a electricity, electricity. Flip that switch and what do you get? You get a electricity, electricity. Every room can now be lit with just a electricity, Electricity. Where do you think it all comes from? This powerful electricity, electricity. Through high wires to here it comes. They're bringing a electricity, electricity. Every building must be wired to use it. To electricity, electricity. Power plants most all use fire to make it a electricity, electricity. Burning fuel and using steam, they generate electricity, electricity. Turn that generator by any means, you're making a electricity, electricity. A generator is a machine that contains a powerful magnet that creates a magnetic field. When wires are rotated rapidly through this field, then a current of electricity is produced. Now, if we only had a superhero who could stand here and turn the generator real fast, then we wouldn't need to burn so much fuel <laughs> to make electricity. Benjamin Franklin flying his kite was searching for electricity. That it had something to do with light and it's all a electricity, electricity. Rubbing a comb with wool or fur will give you a charge of static electricity. Stroking a cat to make it purr, you're building up static electricity. Electricity at rest is called static electricity. Like in the winter, wearing a heavy coat, you get a shock off the doorknob, or you scrape across a carpet and sneak up on your very best friend and sap him on the ear with a shock of electricity. Current flowing to and fro makes a circuit of electricity, electricity. Voltage is the pressure that makes it go. It's pushing up electricity, electricity. Watts will tell you just how much you'll be using up electricity, electricity. Powerful stuff, so watch that plug. It's potent. Electricity, electricity. Electricity, electricity. from our Max Squad Gallery to show for you to witness. And if you have something that you want to show up, any type of art is just fine. Send it on in to us at smc.maxout at gmail.com and we shall process it 
and we shall put it up and we shall show the world for all to see. But that is everything that we have for this week. Make sure that you are hanging out with us on Wednesdays at Max Out Showcase. We're showing full seasons of stuff and we're showing them in parts. You know, it's separated, but it's still the full season of cartoons. So make sure that you are hanging out with us on Wednesdays. And I got good news also because we are going to be doing Max Out Showcase twice a week moving forward. I haven't decided exactly what we get, but that's coming. So keep your eyes peeled. And one last thing. The Yizzle and I will be here next week in this form. However, we will not be in the live chat. So we will be, uh, we will actually be for her big sissy's graduation. So, on top of that, the Gizzle and I decided that it would be a pretty grand idea to do an intro-outro from the beach. So, in a couple few weeks, you'll be getting a beach intro and outro. How do you like that? Do you like that? I like that. I think the rat likes that. The toe muncher. That is all for right now, this morning, now. So just make sure that you hang out because we have an action-packed closer for you and me and anybody else who wants to hang out. So just make sure that you stick around with us from now until it's done and be here with us next week from 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. Whoop! It's your friend time! Right here on the one and only place for the KJ and the Yizzle to show you all the best cartoons and the wonderful lineup that we put together for you. This is the one place that you always want to be. We call this place <gasps> Studios Hollywood. The Samuel Goldwyn Company presents American Gladiators. Selected from a nationwide search, 20 men and women have come to Hollywood to challenge our force of American Gladiators for a single honor to become American Gladiators Champions. Now, here are your American Gladiators, Gemini. Lace, Nitro, Gold, Laser, Blaze, Thunder, Ice, Turbo, and Diamond. The host for American Gladiators, Mike Adamley and his co-host, Larry Zonka. Welcome to this edition of the American Gladiators. Our quarterfinal round is underway, and for the contenders who have made it this far, well, they're starting to have big dreams. Maybe, just maybe, I can win the whole thing. Winning and thinking big have been a way of life for my co-host. He's Hall of Fame fullback from the Miami Dolphins, Mr. Larry Zonka. Good to have you here. Good to be here with you. Larry, there is a great sense of anticipation here. Some of the audience has been outside for over two hours waiting for this big event, and I think I saw a couple of tailgate parties. 
Mike, you've hit it right on the head. It's playoff time. You remember back in the NFL days, some of the people would go out and actually bring sleeping bags and sleep the night before just to get in and get the good tickets, get the good seats. Well, it hasn't become that big, but it's mighty close here on the American Gladiators. Our Gladiators, well, we know they are ready, but let's meet the contenders for this quarterfinal round. In our women's quarterfinal, please welcome back Sheila Mercer of Phoenix, Arizona, a firefighter, and her opponent, Trish Tillotson of Wichita, Kansas, an elementary school teacher. In the men's competition, here's Rico Costantino of Santa Ana, California, a bodyguard. And his opponent, Nate Foster of Laguna Beach, California, a marketing and sales representative. Trish Tollinson, the talented one from Wichita, Kansas. You draw in the quarterfinals someone you went up against in the preliminaries, Sheila Mercer. You've become good friends. Now you have to change your attitude a little bit, I suspect. Oh, <laughs> uh, kind of. Not really. I just really respect her and, and glad to be able to compete against her again. The thing that we enjoyed the most was no matter what event and no matter how many times you competed against her, you always gave each other a hug after it was all over. <laughs> Is that going to happen again here in the quarterfinals? I would imagine so. We've gotten real close. Trish, best of luck. Thanks. Nate, the, the, the cathlete from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, you came into the preliminary round as an alternate, and as such, you weren't allowed to compete in all the events. You couldn't, obviously, because of the situation at hand. But now, you've got a clean slate, and you're all alone in the quarterfinals. Your thoughts? Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to competing against Rico Constantino. He's a great athlete, a great competitor. I think he's one of the best contenders here. So uh, I think he's looking forward to competing against me, too. Okay, Nate. Best of luck. You too, Trish. Larry? Sheila, you're a member of the Phoenix Firefighters. Is that right? Phoenix Fire Department. That's right. Great. I've, got, I've run up some, on something on your resume I'd like to ask you about. It says on your resume, to become a member of the Phoenix Fire Department, a woman has seven minutes and 20 seconds to raise a 30-foot extension ladder, turn on a fire hydrant, drag 200 feet of hose 200 feet, deliver 50 blows with a sledgehammer, and carry a 140-pound sandbag for 30 yards. Is that true? Yeah, that's true, plus a little bit more. But uh, you have to be in pretty good shape to save lives and lift those gurneys up. So uh, I just hope by the end of this competition, I'm not the one being lifted. Sheila, so this is just another day at work for you, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's going to be tough, but it's going to be so much fun. I had so much fun last time. Good deal. Rico, I understand you're involved in personal security. You've, you've acted as a personal security agent for KISS, Iron Maiden, some others. Be honest now, have you ever had to manhandle anyone that looked like some of these gladiators? Nope. <laughs> nope. How do you feel about it? Oh, uh, challenged. These guys are voted best of the best, and it's, you, know, you try to measure yourself on what you can do, and these guys are real good. I, I'm, I feel real good competing against them. They're... Good enough. Good luck, Rico, Sheila, Mike. Well, our contenders are smiling right now, and that's good because in just a few moments, our gladiators are going to change those countenances into grim faces of determination. Let the games begin. This is how our competition works in the American Gladiators, our contenders, two men and two women. We'll compete in seven very different events against our American Gladiators. Now, the contenders will amass the most points in those seven confrontations, automatically advance to the semifinals, and also move one step closer towards our championship final. At stake, over $150,000 in cash and prizes. We're all set to go now with our first event. It's the Joust, and here's Zonk with an explanation. And Mike, our men's top seed, Rico, is up first, and earlier he mentioned the influences that have helped him through the years. I went to public school up to seventh grade, and they told my father that don't expect anything higher than a C from me because I was a below average student, and uh, we decided I'd go to military school. And through the discipline of military school and the plenty of advantages of military school, it made me a better athlete and a better person all around. And once again, the contenders, in this case, Rico, have 30 seconds to knock the gladiator from the I'm pedestal. Yard. If they're successful at doing that, they earn 10 points. Mike Rigo, obviously, in military schools, had a little, uh, little experience in this. He comes out swinging. Rico Costantino, definitely the more aggressive of the two combatants. He is able to knock Turbo off the pedestal. He earns 10 points. 
Rico, Rocky Balboa has nothing on you. You dreamed the impossible dream. You were almost off that pedestal three or four times, and somehow you managed to stay up there. Man, it's hard. It's good. You took a lot of shots there. You were on the ropes several times, yet you came back. In your mind, what did you say to yourself? What kept you on that pedestal? Uh, just perseverance, competition. I love competing. It's man against man. I do like it. He's a good competitor. And in this case against Turbo, Rico, you were the best man. Congratulations. Thank you. And a smiling Rico gets a hand from a happy crowd. Rico's opponent is Nate Foster, a one-time decathlete who entered the prelims as an alternate but carried a high enough score to advance to the quarterfinals. Nate makes his home in Laguna Beach, California. He's a graduate of Cal Poly San Luis Obispo with a degree in business management. An All-American in the decathlon and the pole vault attended the U.S. Olympic trials in 1980. On guard! Straight up, straight up! <laughs> Turbo comes off the mark. He's not hanging back in this competition. And Turbo takes revenge to the dismay of Nate Foster. So Rico jumps to the early lead after one event. Still to come, Atlasphere and the wall. But next, it's the women's turn at the joust. These days, being a parent means getting the most for your money. And the last thing you need to worry about is a high car payment. That's where Chevy Lumina comes in. For a lot less than Ford Taurus GL, you get 24-hour roadside assistance, a bumper-to-bumper -bumper limited warranty. And now you can get a great lease payment on a well-equipped Lumina. You see, we've worried about everything, so you don't have to. The 1996 Lumina, a car your family can trust. Fox, safe at home, brought to you by Wendy's. To create Wendy's new country French chicken sandwich, Dave not only studied French, he became French. We. Oui. So when he took Wendy's whole breast fillet, a slice of Swiss and Dijon mustard sauce, and placed it all on a delicious country French roll, what was left to say? Dave, votre nouveau pour les très bon. Muchas gracias. Wendy's new country French chicken, c'est magnifique. And that pitch is swung on and missed. Nasty stuff from David Cole. I couldn't have made it to the big leagues without playing Little League. It taught me about teamwork, camaraderie, and also how to pitch. I'm still a big supporter of Little League Baseball. It was a great experience for me. And I urge you to get involved, too. Take it from the number one conehead. You score with Little League. Baseball on Fox. On April 2nd, you will taste the temptation. I want to be like you. And witness the power. We're all around you. Kindred, the Embraced, premieres Tuesday, April 2nd. I am a grandfather that takes pleasure in doing anything I can for the kids. And they know it, too. <laughs> I've never been rich and never really wanted to be. I just feel you should live comfortably, but you don't need to be a fool about it. And I try to impart that to my grandchildren. And you've got to have a goal and an aim in life um, in order to get anywhere. This is for my grandfather, who always said I'd make the family proud. For my mom, who never let me out the door without my homework. For my dad, who worked the night shift to make our lives better. For myself, for my future. With Ryder, you can drive off with great rates. So whether it's cross town or cross country, don't make a move without calling Ryder first. Call 1 800 GO RIDER. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood, where the women are ready for their first event in this quarterfinal competition. And we've got a rematch between Sheila Mercer and Trish Tillotson. Sheila up first in the joust. Sheila was defeated by Trish 99 to 39 in the first round. But our firefighter score was high enough to have her advance. I'm now God. in the joust, she'll face off with Diamond. And Diamond's got a little payback coming. Both <laughs> Sheila and Trish whipped her in the preliminary round in this event.
Sheila trying to maintain her balance after taking some nasty shots early on. It looked like she had Diamond going, but Diamond ultimately the victor, Larry. Well, Sheila's taken four or five good hits to the head here. It's not a wonder she lost her balance. So a great chance for Trish Tillotson to take an early lead. A black belt in karate, Trish told us how martial arts has strengthened her mentally as well as physically. It's just given me the ability to focus more than anything and to believe in myself. And when a challenge gets too great that I think, gosh, I'm scared to death and I can't do that, I remember all the things that I did as a little kid when I was studying karate. And, and my instructor, who was um, a Japanese instructor who really influenced my life, um, I think that, gosh, if I did it back then, I can do this now. <laughs> Well, remember, Trish did defeat Diamond in the joust during the preliminaries. Let's see if she can take her down in the quarterfinals as well. Some wild swinging by both combatants early on. Trish almost off the back of that pedestal, but she hangs on. Now she's got Diamond going, and that's it. Diamond unable to maintain her balance and steps across. Trish, you know what your problem is? You don't get excited enough. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it's obvious that intimidation is a big part of the Gladiators game. You were able to erase that or at least reduce that to uh, not being a factor at all. How did that happen? They're human just like I am. They put their costumes on one leg at a time, huh? That's right. Trish, you get 10 points. Congratulations. Yeah! Nice fight. <laughs> one leg at a time. A fired up Trish grabs the early lead over our firefighter Sheila, 10 to zip. After one event on our men's side, Rico leads Nate by the identical margin. As our quarterfinal round now moves on to Atlasphere. And Larry, in this event, the contenders have 60 seconds in which to maneuver their Atlasphere into any one of four red, white, and blue scoring pods. Now, the big catch in this event, of course, is our two gladiators. They're caged inside Atlaspheres as well, and they'll be trying to stop the contenders from scoring. And once again, Rico Costantino has a 10-point lead over Nate Foster going into this event. Nate, a former decathlete, talked to us earlier about what it takes to compete here on the American Gladiators. Someone who's not in shape isn't going to be able to come out here and do these events. They're not going to just be a weekend warrior that, you know, comes out every Saturday and Sunday and participates in something like this. You have to be someone who works out, who's in shape. Atmosphere is brought to you by Skittles, bite-sized candies, taste the rainbow. Ready red, ready blue. Our referee, Larry Thompson, ready, making sure everything's in order for this Atmosphere event. Those plumes of white smoke, harmless nitrogen gas to indicate that the contenders have scored. And Larry wastes no time clearing the area. Smart man, it's not fun to get steamrolled. Incidentally, each goal in this quarterfinal round worth three points. And Rico there in the red cage on the verge of scoring, but he can't do it. Mike, watching Jim and I, he's getting very at home in, this, in his cage in here. We call him Rage in a Cage. But he's really learned how to operate that thing through the competition. Speaking of operating, Rico operates his atmosphere into that scoring pod, so he's picked up the early lead in this event. He's got three points, tries to get another. But the Gladiator keeps him out. Both of our Gladiators, Laser and Gemini, doing an excellent job of shielding those pods. Again, Rico trying to force into the pod. And there you see Nate pinned. Laser has him pinned against the sidewall as Rico rolls from fatigue. Gemini says, you ain't going nowhere, Buster. Gem again, Gemini and Laser doing a great job of shielding those pods. Harder than it looks, isn't it, Rico? Oh, it definitely is, but it's a blast. It's, it's really fun. You got one goal. That was the important thing. That's, that's worth three points. Congratulations. Great, thank you. Let's move over here a second and talk to, to Nate. Nate, your problem was much the same one that drivers out here in Southern California experienced during rush hour. There was just too much traffic. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. You think you can get away somewhere and you can change direction in this thing, but the weight of it just, it's tough to maneuver. And then you've got a guy like Laser who's just, he's quick and he's just stayed on me the whole time. Couldn't go anywhere. Couldn't score. <laughs> All right, Nate, don't worry. You'll come back. All right. Rico wins this atmosphere battle over Nate. Three zip and increases his lead to 13 zip after two events. 
The women are up next, and our firefighter, Sheila Mercer, from Arizona, told us how the American Gladiators is like on-the-job training. You have to be able to react to different situations, because endless amount of things can happen. And I think this will really help me being on the American Gladiators because I never, you never know what each gladiator is going to do. So you have to be able to react quickly you know, to what they do. And I think that will help me. As we see Sheila buttoned up and ready in her atmosphere to do a little battle against Lace and also against Gold as we see Gold getting into her vehicle. And you might remember in the preliminary round, Sheila Mercer and Trish Tillotson waged a spirited battle but became best friends because of it. And now here they are going against one another again. Ready red, ready blue, gladiators ready. Actually Fire both contenders ready. qualified for the American gladiators in Phoenix, Arizona. And that's where their relationship began. But right now they have a singular purpose and that's to score against Lace and Gold. And Sheila Mercer in the red atmosphere scores first. Trish seizing the opportunity, the kind of a block pod. Now she gets down to the far end and scores some points herself. Trish wasting no time getting that pod rolling. She's kind of the, the distance gal in here, Mike. Run with it. Sheila on her knees, and yep, she gets that one to settle in there. It's all tied at six apiece. Again, each goal worth three points. And another goal for Trish Tillotson. And she's on her way to another one. So all of a sudden, it's 12-6. Sheila, again, desperately trying to score before time runs out and can't do it. And as our contenders catch their breath, here's Larry with Lace. Lace, good job. Let me ask you something. You've been in here several times. You've been in atmosphere. You've done very well at it. What's the most difficult part of it? Well, I think getting it turned around and 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 uh, going in a different direction once you once you've got it rolling pretty good in in, in a direction downstage, and suddenly the contender decides they're going to fake you out and go go backwards. It's getting it stopped and getting it going back the other way. Well, you did a great job doing it. Thanks for a great competition. Thank you. Sheila, you didn't score as many times as I know that you would have liked to, but the important thing is you got on the scoreboard. I took a few rolls. I had a little bit out of control in me, a little bit too excited, I think, but at least I'm on the scoreboard now. Six points, but like you said, you're on the scoreboard. All right, Sheila. But Trish did roll away to a 12-6 win in atmosphere. So now, after two events in our women's quarterfinal, she now leads Sheila 22-6. There's more action to come here on American Gladiators, including Breakthrough and Conquer, our game of assault, next up, The Wall. Eight is News Live. Find out how you can test drive a car without ever leaving home. That story and more at 10. Oh, I should No, you shouldn't. <gasps> Unhand that chocolate. <laughs> Presenting new Three Musketeers miniatures with less than one gram of fat per piece, you're saved! Mm. Big on chocolate, not on fat! Dry gel anti first break. Odor and wetness protection with no white chunky residue. Clear enough? Soft and dry clear gel. Baby Ruth. Who can resist all that rich nougat and caramel? And all those crunchy roasted peanuts. Just what you need to get going. Showtime! Baby Ruth from Nestle. This baby gets you going. Fox invites you to go beyond the bounds of darkness into the heart of the night. Experience a seductive.
seductive new series, Entertainment Weekly calls Wickedly Fun. See Thomas Howell and Mark Frankel star in Kindred, The Embraced, premiering Tuesday at 8, 7 Central. Tonight, catch a brand new episode of the show everybody's talking about. You're like Byron Allen, without the edge. The show, coming up next. Mossman flashes back with Mel Gibson tonight at 11.30 on Channel 8. When your family is growing and your income seems to be shrinking, the price of some family sedans is getting out of reach. Introducing Chevy Lumina. With standard features like automatic, air conditioning, and power locks, you can feel comfortable in it. With dual airbags and front and rear crush zones, you can feel safe in it. And for over $2,000 less than Ford Taurus GL, you can actually afford it. The 1996 Lumina. It's a car your family can trust. Now get low 4.8% financing on Lumina at your local Chevrolet Geo dealer. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood where our contenders await the wall. And in this event our two contenders rigged in safety harnesses will climb side by side making their way up with the help of these specially designed grips in an attempt to make it to the summit first. And after two events thus far, Rico Costantino has the lead over Nate Foster. As you see, Nate Foster getting ready to scale the wall. He'll be followed up the wall by Thunder. This is Bullseye! And Rico getting ready to scale the wall also with a big smile. And he'll be followed up the wall by Nitro. Ready! Each contender given a 10-second head start. Nate Foster in the blue, Rico Costantino in the red. Both contenders moving very well early on as the gladiators hit the wall behind them. That'd have to break their concentration a little bit, wouldn't you think, Mike? Well, just the sound of them pounding the wall <laughs> ought to shake their concentration, but Rico is undaunted. And, and hanging on by one arm. Rico Costantino yeah. with great upper body strength. Yeah, he made it there first. Yeah. You can never say Rico doesn't get into the competition. Nate Foster having some problems. Turbo had a hold of him, then slips off the wall. All Nate has to do at this point is go on up the wall. The gladiator's off behind him. It's just a matter of concentration. Come on, Nate! He's operating under the 60-second clock and is going to be very close on, to whether he up. makes it to the top come in on. time. Come on! I'm afraid the clock's run out. Good job, Nate! Nate, it would have been the easiest thing in the world for you to give up, but you were persistent, you plugged all the way, you just ran out of time. Your hand was about that far from making it to the top before the whistle blew. Oh, man. <laughs> it's a lot tougher than I ex ex expected. I just, I said, I'm not going to quit, I'm not going to fall, i got to dig it up this thing. It went well in practice, I don't know what happened. To do well in this event, you do have to have the nerve of a riverboat gambler, and you did take some chances. You were actually doing one-arm giant swings out there. Yeah, they, they put the grips in a different place, and you have to grab for the grips with the big hooks on them there. And if the gladiator's close to you and just gets a hand on your ankle, you're off. This was a case where that superior upper body strength of yours and hand gripping power really paid off. Congratulations. 32 seconds, incidentally, for Rico to make it to the top. And Rico's section has reason to cheer as he takes 10 more points away from the wall. As a result, Rico increases his lead over Nate after three events. The women are at the base of the wall now where Trish has a lead over Sheila. And as our female contenders await their 32-foot climb, we will tell you that Sheila has drawn Blaze and Trish Tillotson, well, she had an interesting phobia entering this competition. Actually, in my whole life, I've kind of had a fear of heights. So uh, I've had to really overcome that, and it's neat, I have, because almost everything we do is at a height. Uh, so that's been a little tough, but it's, it's been wonderful, too, because now I, I really don't have a fear at all. Well, as you remember, Trish didn't show any fear in the preliminary rounds, where she made it up to the top in 44 seconds. Now, in this round, she's going to face Ready? ice. <laughs> Sheila in the red, Trish in the blue. Again, the contenders given a 10-second head start. Both contenders using those grips to win their way up the wall. 
Blaze hot on Sheila's heels. The same can be said for Ice chasing Trish, and Blaze has got a hold of Sheila, and off the wall she goes. With Trish hanging on for dear life with both hands on one grip, and she comes off the wall. But Trish does take away five points for reaching the higher level. So now, after three events, she leads Sheila by a count of 27 to 6. And over in our men's competition, Rico Constantino holds a commanding lead over Nate Foster as they prepare for our next event. And that next event is called Breakthrough and Conquer. It's a two-parter where each contender has a chance to earn a total of 10 points. Five points if they can score a touchdown against the Gladiator in Breakthrough, and another five points if they can knock the Gladiator outside of that ring in Conquer. Nate Foster's up first. And he's going to be facing off with Turbo. Nate at 5'11", 188 pounds, is giving up some size and some weight, obviously, against Turbo. Let's see what kind of move he uses. Well, Micah wasn't much of a move at all. Turbo read it and put him to the mat. Telegraph City. Nate Foster's mission is not over, however. He's got another chance here in the Conquer Ring. Gemini, however, a very formidable foe. Gemini using that upper body strength to keep Nate away. They're very close to the edge. Let's listen for the call. No score. You heard referee Larry Thompson's decision, no score. And for Gemini and Turbo, just another day at the office. Turbo, yeah, I tell you what, you look like a world-class middle linebacker. You look like the How to Do It film for the NFL, the way you came up to the five-yard line, kept your balance, moved, put your, stuck your face in the numbers, took the man down. Well, I just thank you for the compliment, and I'm happy that I'm too young to have to have done that to you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'll be forever glad that you didn't have to do that. Everybody else did, Turbo. It was a great job. Jim and I, in the circle, you did a great job keeping him off of you. Yeah, the one thing, the contender made a mistake by keeping his head down too low. So I was able to keep his head pinned and just keep the feet moving right toward the end. I got a little bit relaxed and got toward the edge. The key for the gladiators is to try to stay in the center of the ring as much as possible. If we have any contenders in the audience right now, I'm sure they're listening to what you're saying and they'll try to apply it. Great job, fellas. And so now it's Rico Costantino's turn to do battle with Turbo and Gemini. And those chants you hear, well, Rico, 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 well, they could spell trouble for our gladiators, as Rico told us earlier. I, I feed off the fans. I. I take that energy and I, I, I do feed off it. And the louder they get, the more I hear my name or the more I hear the cheers, it just grows in me and it bubbles over like a volcano. And then all of a sudden the whistle goes and you just turn it loose. It's a perfect time for Rico to explode, but Turbo once again says nothing doing. Seems like Turbo fed off of those cheers as well because he stops Rico short of five points in breakthrough. Now inside the conquer ring, Rico trying to take Gemini up high. I don't know if that's a good idea, but it pays off there. And Gemini can't believe it. And if there's one contender that Gemini loves to beat, it's Rico Costantino. So he'll be back. Gemini will remember. So five points for Rico and Conquer, and high fives for a crowd that probably deserves an assist. After four events, Rico opens his lead over Nate, 28 to zero. Still to come on American Gladiators, our game of assault, Powerball. But up next, women's breakthrough and conquer. Fox, cold hard facts, brought to you by AT&T. Can't be too sure. Between now and April 10th, every time you place a collect call using 1-800-CALL-ATT, you and the person you're calling could win an internship on Beverly Hills 90210. Ooh, they're gonna like me in this. A Beverly Hills 90210 star will be calling the lucky winners during the April 10th episode on Fox. To win, just keep those fingers and toes crossed. Oh, this will just make Valerie sick. Then keep using 1-800-CALL-ATT for all your collect calls. You know, the great thing about hockey is that it's uh, three 20-minute periods of non-stop action. It's because the puck can't stop unless the puck leaves the ice surface, the goalie gloves it, or if you score a goal. How's the puck going to leave this ice surface? It can't. 
So what about a TV timeout? This game's not televised. The NHL on Fox. Bonnie Anderson guest stars on a brand new Melrose Place Monday. Presenting Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant. A clear, clean gel that goes on smoothly with no white residue for powerful all-day protection. Gillette Clear Gel Antiperspirant. There's a new suspect in Savannah's most shocking murder trial. I'm going to tell the whole world what a cold-hearted monster you are. You agreed! How could your mother accuse my father of murder? You mean our father. You do have an alibi, right? Savannah, next. I hold and him. action! Oh, oh. <clears throat> I hold in my hand new Milky Way Light. Half the fat of the leading chocolates, but tastes just like a Milky Way. We think you'll enjoy it. Excuse me, excuse me. <gasps> Sorry. <laughs> Half the fat of the leading chocolates, but tastes just like a Milky Way. And you think I'll enjoy it? Are we talking creamy caramel, fluffy nougat, smooth, rich chocolates? And you think I'll enjoy it? Give me that. New Milky Way light, smooth, light, everything's right. Inside information. Gynecologists say strenuous activity can make a woman's flow appear heavier for a while. But with Stay Free, you're worry-free. Nature Sorb, a stay-free discovery. Earth's most absorbent fibers draw fluid inside stay-free with 100% more natural power than Kotex. Stay-free. Worry-free. Inside information, Nature Sorb is only in stay-free. Stay-free. Worry-free. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood, where Trish Tillotson leads Sheila Mercer in this quarterfinal matchup as gold and diamond take the turf for a breakthrough and conquer. Trish getting ready to go against uh, gold and breakthrough. Trish, the uh, resident of Wichita, Kansas. We'll see if she can put the Kansas Comet move yeah. on gold. And gold has that middle linebacker look in her eye. <laughs> Whoa! Oh. 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 I shot right to the chin. <laughs> gold feels her chin, a little numb there. Larry, Trish looked like you in your heyday. <laughs> Boy, she laid it right on her chin now. Now a chance to pick up another five against Diamond, and Diamond, <laughs> short work for Trish Tillotson. Trish revved up. She comes in here with long strides and puts the point of the ball of her fist on Gold's chin and puts Gold down for the count. Gold, no doubt, shaking out the cobwebs as Sheila Mercer tries to pick up where Trish left off. Ready? Well, this time Gold meets Sheila Mercer low and no score. Takes her down before she crosses the goal line. Step in the ring. Ready? Again, the contender has 10 seconds to take any part of the gladiator's body outside the ring. Short work again for the contender. Sheila Mercer picks up five points. Sheila using a little bit of a fireman's carry. But Trish wins breakthrough and conquer, and now after four events, she leads Sheila by a count of 37 to 11. In our men's quarterfinal, Rico leads Nate as they now take aim in assault. And Larry, here's what the contender sees as they try to maneuver through the course in an effort to hit a target placed above the gladiator using a variety of weapons. First, the crossbow. Then it's a mad dash across the floor to the rocket launcher. If unsuccessful there, it's on to a cannon. Then the contender can move closer for an attempt to hit the target with a pistol. Now a final effort to hit the target can be made with three softballs. And if all else fails, four points will be awarded to the contender if they can cross the finish line without being hit by a tennis ball that travels, you got it, in excess of 100 miles per hour. And doing the honors for the gladiators is laser. Ready? Shot. Rico Costantino first up. You heard him. Take your best shot, Laser. I'm going to pick you off. Let's see what happens. No dice there. Rico keeping a good upfield stance, keeping an eye on Laser at all times. And he's trying to keep a little more than an eye on Laser. As he nearly takes Laser's leg off with the bazooka. That's a good idea. Keep the gladiator off balance. 
<laughs> and again he does it. Again, the contender has 60 seconds to get the job done. So he's also working against the clock. The shot to the pistol is wide left. And that final evasive maneuver right there didn't pay off for Rico as Laser was able to nail him on the hip. Rico might have been better off making a straight line towards that final safe zone. Larry? Rico, you did very well. You went a lot further, actually, now than you did in the preliminaries. Uh, what happened there at the end? You just, you just didn't see it coming, or what? Well, I saw it, but uh, making 210 dive at the right time when he's firing a 100-mile-an-hour tennis ball, a little rough. Gets a little tough to dodge as you get closer to Laser's gun, doesn't it? It is. 100 miles an hour is fast. You were moving through there. It was fine, fine exhibition. Thanks a lot. Thank you. So now Nate Foster, who is desperately in need of points, has a chance to get off the snide. Through four events, Nate Foster is scoreless. Ready? Nate trying to figure out how to use that crossbow. Well, when he rushed into that safe zone, Mikey knocked it around a little bit, disheveled the arrow a little bit. That shot was disheveled. <laughs> that shot was way off to the right. Larry, I think Nate accidentally pulled the trigger as he's trying to take aim, but it doesn't matter as Laser's able to pick him off on the way to that third safe zone. I think if you notice Nate as he was going through the course, we're going to see it right here. He does a good job of looking upfield, but then he starts to look for a place to land, and when he takes his eye off, he gets hit. So, Laser shuts out the men in assault. So our scoring remains the same now after five events. Over in our women's competition, Trish leads Sheila as they prepare for assault. And when it comes to accurate shooting, nobody's better at this event than Lace. She'll be doing the honors for the Gladiators. Ready? Sheila Mercer will be trying to score some points and avoid those tennis balls. Again, we've said it many times, but they hit you, they sting. They travel in excess of over 100 miles an hour. Sheila trying a little different maneuver, coming up over the left corner of the safe zone. Comes pretty close with the arrow. <laughs> Again, she looked like she was shooting more at the gladiator than the bullseye, Mike. And that look on her face, I don't know if it's sheer determination or fear. I'll tell you what, she's got, she's got Lace worried up there. Set yourself now. One final chance, and she doesn't make it to the final safe zone. Lace has done the job again. Sheila caught one on the right side of her noggin, just a little off the side of the goggles. Watch right here on the right temple. The ball strikes her a good one. You see her hair fly. That has to hurt. Sheila, take two aspirin. Call me in the morning. And the next time you play this game, keep your eye on the gladiator. That's certainly what Trish Tillerson will try to do now. Ready? Trish looks like a gyroscope going from safe zone to safe zone. A bead of water in a hot frying pan. Bouncing all over the place. I tell you what, though, her shots have been pretty darn good. Trish trying her hand with a cannon, but she exposes too much of her body, and Lace was able to find an opening and pick her off. Watch on the replay. You're going to see Lace's shot come left of the cannon and pick up Trish right on the edge of her chest protector. And that has to smart. As the Gladiators go, four for four in assault. The women's score stays the same after five events. Still to come is our eliminator, but up next, Powerball. $5 cars, that's what the ad says. But the 2,000 people who showed up today should have read the fine print. The story on 10 o'clock news. Turn their quiet country cousin into a sizzling city check. You turn Sheila into a trappy looking 
hooked you. Can you do the same thing to your mama? Now they can't get the chick out of the city. We gonna be roomies forever. Kim Wayans guest stars on the Wayans Brothers. Then, on Unhappily, something evil this way comes. It's a monster! More horrific than Amityville. A bigger nightmare than Elm Street. Can Jack save them from the rat in the basement? Boys, sick them! <laughs> Unhappily, right after the Wayans, Wednesday. There's more comedy for the family Wednesday night. Stick around, you drama fans. Savannah's on tonight. Welcome to Savannah. You are about to enter a world of revenge. I'm going to tell the whole world what a cold-hearted monster you are. You agree! Rivalry. How could your mother accuse my father of murder? You mean our father. And deception. You do have an alibi, right? Now, Aaron Spelling's Savannah. Savannah is brought to you in part by McDonald's. I just wasn't satisfied with the way my headache medicine was working. And then my doctor told me about a medicine called Arutus. Of all the prescription pain medicines, 82% of doctors surveyed have prescribed Arutus. And now it's available in a non-prescription strength. Potent new Arutus KT. Just 25 milligrams is as effective as 400 milligrams of Motrin IB, 440 of Aleve, or 1,000 milligrams of extra strength Tylenol. Now I've got Arutus KT. New Arutus KT, the potent medicine for pain. Wow, you still have a trike lens? The conditioning color enhancer. It's subtle. It just gives your color a kick. And there's no commitment. Lens washes out and eight shampoos. Eight is great. Lens by Clairol. Give your color a little kick. Savannah will return after these messages. They're out there, and they're not like most of us. There's a passion that unites them, like a family. Some people have even called them rebels. They're Saturn owners. Hey guys, this must be the place, huh? Ladies, hurry up! The factory guy's gonna talk! I don't know. I guess if you don't own one, you probably wouldn't understand. Life with a rock and roller. Three, Three decades, decades of gravitational pull. People who cannot pronounce my name. Boris Skoba. <laughs> Motherhood. Life can put lines on your face. Luckily, Maybelline can help keep them off. Maybelline Revitalizing Alpha Hydroxy Makeup. Flawless coverage with Alpha Hydroxy and SPF 10. To reduce the look of today's lines and fight off the appearance of tomorrow's. Maybelline Revitalizing Alpha Hydroxy Makeup. The more you wear it, the better you look. Sound good? It is good. Nabisco shredded wheat. It's just naturally good. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood for this quarterfinal round of the American Gladiators. In the men's competition, Rico leads Nate 28 zip as our contenders stand by for Powerball, which of course is our 45 second contest of speed and endurance in which contenders try to score in one of five scoring cylinders. However, trying to deter our contenders will be Nitro, Thunder, and Turbo. And Powerball is brought to you by the Nintendo Entertainment System. Nintendo, now you're playing with power. And in this quarterfinal round, goals scored in the center cylinder are worth four points. The outer cylinder is worth two. Rico Constantino right off the bat gets around Nitro and puts one in for two points. Rico making a nice move as we see Nate score on the outside. Nate taking advantage of that double team on Rico. Nitro keeping Rico out of the scoring area. Now it's Nate who draws the double team as Rico scores against Nitro again. Fellow that weighs 211 pounds, he has very good moves. Unfortunately, he runs into that double team occasionally. And Nate takes a body slam from Turbo to the turf. Very rudely, I might add. And that's it. Four to the final. 
Rico again smiling. He's done very well in this. Nate took quite a beating during the course of this competition. Nate, my man, the drought is finally over. You are on the scoreboard, but boy, did you pay the price. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna have to do the eliminator in 15 seconds <laughs> to catch up to Rico. <laughs> We ought to take you back over there because your face, there's still an imprint of your face over by that one cone. <laughs> God, it's a great way to celebrate my birthday. <laughs> your birthday today? How old? 33. 33, and you're on the scoreboard. All right, Nate. But big man, you continue to roll. You won this event 4-2. Perseverance, I'm telling you, it's perseverance. Because you're not going to run over them. It's just make, move, fake, juke. And, and that's hard to do when they're double teaming you most of the time. Well, I, I take that as a compliment. If they think I'm, I play that well, that they have to double team me, it's, you take it that way. You just persevere more. Rico, nicely done. Well Thank done. And it's good to have you on the scoreboard, Nate. Nate's on the scoreboard. Rico continues to smile as he wins a tough battle of Powerball and further cushions his lead over Nate after six events. After five events in our women's competition, Trish leads Sheila as they get ready to take on Blaze. Ice and Diamond in Powerball. And Larry, as we have said so often in this event, intimidation a big part of the Gladiators game. However, Trish Tillerson and Sheila Mercer aren't the type of women who get intimidated easily. You might remember their preliminary round. Uh, there was some bad blood going on between the Gladiators and these two women. Let's see if it happens again. Trish, quick out of the blocks, can't get on track, and neither can Sheila. Diamond had a big time headlock on her. No score, Oh, Trish takes a wicked hit in the left cheekbone from Diamond. Sends her off into the cushion. She scored, and so did Sheila right there. But Trish, I'll tell you what, she is not afraid of anybody. Whoa! I tell you, ice hits you so hard, my teeth are rattling. Go, a very physical match, one of the most physical I've seen. Again, endurance a big part of it. Trish Tillotson seems to have more of it. Trish Tillotson and Diamond have been getting in each other's way through this competition. We see one that's taken place a little earlier as Trish drives through the scoring pot. Diamond comes in. Right forearm to the side of the head, puts Trish after she scores the gold over the scoring pod and into the nickel seats. She is one tough woman and so is Sheila Mercer. However, this was Sheila's only goal of the game. After six, Trish now has a 30-point advantage over Sheila. Who will advance to the semis? We'll find out in the eliminator. I'm always on the road, so I use my calling card every day. But MCI friends and family only covered my card calls to home. So I got AT&T True Reach savings. Now, wherever I'm calling, I'm totally covered. Now, that's being backed up. AT&T True Reach savings. Save 25% on all types of U.S. calls on your AT&T phone bill when you spend just $25 a month. Proofs on the bill. Ooh, I like the sound of that. Savings on all kinds of calls. That's your true choice, AT&T. Night on the town? That's easy. Weekend in the Caribbean? That takes finesse. Softness from a conditioner? That's easy. Softness and body? That takes finesse. With two conditioners, one that penetrates for softness, one that evaporates and lifts for body, for fuller, more beautiful hair. Softness? That's easy. Softness and body? That takes finesse. Of all the eye drops you can buy, Visine is the only one recommended by pharmacists four to one over any other brand. Visine's formula gives you 100% of the relief you need. Visine, it gets the ring out. No better, no better, no better, no better. No stick. Swing better. Oh, huh, baby, huh, baby. If your next meal might be some time off, remember, nothing satisfies like Snickers. Hungry? Why wait? That's all right. On Unhappily Ever After, Jack's got a new roommate. Giant rat. <laughs> now, he'll sacrifice anything to get out of the basement. Even as kids. Don't kill that rat. <laughs> we'll be at the Pancake House. Unhappily Ever After, Wednesday on the WB. Everybody wants the W. Everybody likes the W. Come on, baby, watch the WB. 
A deadly plane crash in the area and an overnight hit and run kills one. Housing sales and values up in the city, but down in the burbs. Find out why at 10. Fifty-two years ago, they collided. Loving dinosaurs from an age gone by. Two companions, three sons, seven grandkids. A world war, a cold war, a gulf war. And the endless tug of war between man and wife. Old values, old ways. Except when the designated washer of dishes is given a night's relief by her dutiful designated mate. Myrtle Beach, number one for golf and family vacations. Call Myrtle Beach Jet Express at 1-800-FUN-TUCSON and fly nonstop jet service from Cleveland to Myrtle Beach from only $79. Myrtle Beach, perfect for your family vacation and championship golf. Ask us about our Myrtle Beach vacation packages from only $199. And now try our great golf packages from only $17 per day, only on Myrtle Beach Jet Express. Call 1-800-FUN-TUCSON today. Welcome back to Universal Studios Hollywood, and we're ready now for our final event, the all-new Eliminator. Mike, both contenders start at the treadmill and must run against the belts in an effort to reach the top. Once there, each contender must cross a 30-foot span by means of a specially designed hand bike. Then, across the balance beam, where instead of medicine balls, gladiators now throw weighted blocking pads at the contenders. And then they have to scramble up a 20-foot cargo net. From there, a wild ride down a zip line, which will carry the contenders across the entire length of the arena floor. And then it's a final straightaway, where the contenders will have to negotiate a set of hurdles. And then an important decision, which lane to pick. Behind three of these doors, our gladiators all bent on stopping the contenders from crossing the finish line. And those contenders, Sheila Mercer and Trish Tillotson. Sheila Mercer trails Trish Tillotson by 30 coming in, so that translates to a 15-second margin for Sheila to make up here. And should the contenders fall off any of these obstacles, those are five-point penalties. Sheila was the first to reach the handbike, but she falters a bit, and Trish has taken the lead. Trish has a little more upper body strength, and she, whoa, she takes a spill off of the beam, costing herself some valuable time and points. So Sheila could uh, could make this very interesting here. She's the first to scramble up the cargo net. Trish having a lot of trouble getting back up on the deck to get to the cargo net. Sheila to the zip line first. Perfect. Two-point landing, one-point landing, I guess. Over the hurdles. Now, which door? Strong one there. Lace gives Sheila a hip check and kind of stops her a little bit. Here comes Trish. That was Diamond waiting for her. Now the question, does she cross the finish line in enough time to beat Sheila Mercer? Mike, the answer is yes, and Trish will advance to the semifinals. Sheila, you had an insurmountable lead to overcome, and Trish was assessed a, a 10 point penalty because she fell off the balance beam. Still, that was not enough to, to beat her here in the Eliminator final. You've gone through seven very rough events, the preliminaries, now the quarterfinals. You're gonna go back to Phoenix and back to the fire department job. What are you gonna tell your friends? I'm gonna tell them, hey, I gave it my best shot and I did the best I could and unfortunately it wasn't good enough. Indeed you did, Sheila. Congratulations, thanks for being with us. It was so much fun. I thank everybody for everything. It's been a blast, I can't tell you. It was a blast having you. Trish, first of all, are you all right? You took a terrible tumble on that balance beam. Yeah, I got a few scrapes and bruises, but I'm gonna make it. <laughs> Congratulations, the pride and joy of Wichita, Kansas. Trish Tillotson is going on to the semifinals. So, congratulations to Trish Tillotson with her win over Sheila Mercer. In our men's quarterfinals, Rico leads Nate by 30 points. So as was the case with the women, Nate will have to win by 15 seconds to advance. And Rico would have to trip, stumble, and fall, and a whole lot more for Nate Foster to go on. But anything can happen in the Eliminator. Nate in the blue, Rico in the red. And look at Rico really work that hand bike. Again, Rico capitalizing with that superior upper body strength, blows the dummy out of his way and hits the cargo net on the run. A huge lead. Yeah. 
Down the zip line he comes. I think he knows he's got it one. He just wants to finish with a flourish. Little pizzazz goes low on turbo. Has to scramble across the finish line, and he does. Now Nate will finish things up. Nice for him over the hurdles. He catches a break here. Nobody behind the door. Good effort for Nate Foster, but it's Rico who advances. Larry? Nate's kind of been a rough day as far as getting points, hasn't he? Hey, it sure has, Larry. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm glad it's over. <laughs> I'm glad it's over. I'm glad Rico's doing a great job. He's tearing it up, and uh, I think he's, he's probably going to win it. Well, we certainly had a good time watching you compete. Thanks, Rico, great job. You went through it. You've been smiling all day. I'll tell you what, I've enjoyed watching you compete, and even more, I've, watched, I've enjoyed watching you get prepared for it. They call it the Rico Rock around here. You just sit down and concentrate on each event, right? Yeah, mind, focus your mind and body, visualize, see yourself through the event, see yourself going through the event, and just put your uh, dreams into action. Well, you did a fine job, and of course, you're going to move on to our semifinals. It was very, very entertaining watching you both. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll have a big round of applause for our two contenders. So after rolling his way past Turbo, Rico rocks his way to the semi. So congratulations to our winners here on the American Gladiators. And here's a preview of some of the action you'll be seeing next week in our quarterfinals. Next week, the quarterfinals continue as four more contenders move one step closer to becoming American Gladiators champion. Susan Hurt, Wesley Keck, Maria Nickte, and Chris Bovatek. Watch as they challenge Gemini, Ice, Thunder, Diamond, and the rest of the American Gladiators. Join the American Gladiators Band Club. Send $3 for postage and handling to American Gladiators Band Club. Van Nuys, California, 91463-0001. That's it for this edition of the American Gladiators. For Larry Zonka, I'm Mike Adamley saying so long from Universal Studios Hollywood. Thank you.